Hey, you! Get those lights shining and move those stands over. We can't have the stage ban in the way of the screen. Oh. <laughs> wow, we're already jumping on into this. An intern! Hey, Inti, look this way. Oh. The director can't be referring to me, right? So... Yeah, I'm talking to you. Now get your butt over here. Okay, so I guess we're kind of like the intern, not like someone with a secret double life. Um, my name is Alice, not Inti. Don't tell me he somehow got that from my rather unglorified position as the production crew's intern. Yep, so this is how we start. We are an intern. So come in. Here I am, on the set of the Supernova Singing Contest, the first project I've been involved in since graduating from a specialist art school and starting my internship at this production company. That's actually pretty good. I mean, her, like, her life is a bit better than mine. I'm, I'm actually impressed. But also, the direct is that the director guy? Um, his iPad has like a pineapple logo instead of the apple because of copyrights. When I say my position is unglorified, it really as it is sounds. Move this, carry that, hold the camera cable, escort a big shot over wherever. One would think showbiz is all about shiny things and outrageous gossip, but my job is nowhere close to either. That and it hardly pays for a roof on top of my head. How long do you plan on taking, Inti? Get those heels clicking. One, two, one, two. <coughs> oh my goodness. I'm not even wearing heels. Sheesh. It's just that I can't exactly jump over all the sets in the audience area to get to the stage. Can't he just give me 30 extra... 30 seconds? Why not just a minute? I mean, like, because where were you sitting? And, like, how many seats, like, in the audience row is there? But, um... Wow. <laughs> I'm just also looking at the director's face. He's just, like... He just not wants to be there. Here I am. What do... What do you want exactly? I can't help but sound a little bitter as I pan out those words. The director doesn't seem to care about the jug I had to make to the stage. Seriously, how long and big is the set? He has his head turned in another direction as he orders somebody else to set up the speakers before looking back at me. So he looks back and goes, Move, don't And he comes back. The boss wanted a bottle of water. She's probably in the back with the contestants. Seriously, that's why I had to run from the back row seats all the way over here to fetch the producer a bottle of water that's in the room next to hers? That does she not have hands and feet? I mean, what? Does she not have hands or and feet? Well, not as though complaining would help. I'm just a little lowly intern. After all, he'd say I have nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure... I know, working as an intern, it's tough, but I'm pretty sure she has a life. Yes, sir. I'll go do that now. Water, water. There we go. You think on a singing show, the singers would want water instead of caffeinated drinks? And here's where the producers should be. Who's this girl? Seated closest to the door is a dark-skinned girl with this cascade of perfect black hair. She's... she's gorgeous. Those eyes are so striking, I couldn't stop myself from staring. At least she's too preoccupied with talking to her makeup artist and hairstylist to notice. Oh, is she like those, um, sassy girls? Or popular girls? Like the mean girls? Not so much blessed, please. Oh, and maybe just a little bit of a curl in my hair. Only the bottom, though, so you know it's wavy, but not too much. Oh no, that curly one? That one would make my hair too curly. Can't you find this one smaller? My delicate hair can only handle the low heat setting, by the way, but most designer wands come with that. I feel like I'm gonna make her character a little sassy. That's what I'm probably thinking. I, I have a feeling she's probably like a mean girl, or like that type of popular girl. Are you kidding me? That's a straightener, you idiot! I want my hair curled, not flat iron. Ugh, send in the other team of stylists. They are at least might be able to help. Wow, but that attitude is my first impression of her with glass. It would have shattered into a billion pieces and now lie littered beneath my feet. Oh my goodness. The lilt and tone in her voice is priceless. Maybe there is a perk of being sent away over here just for the producer. No, 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 you gotta color Cherry's cheeks more. Here, give me that. I'll rescue her from that vampire skin. What? Oh my goodness, she is very pale. Uh, the pale girl, one with the makeup artist just called Cherry, doesn't look too happy about being rescued, if you can even call it that. In fact, if she could run, she would probably run off to the moon. Yet she seems too shy for that, so she resorts to shrinking into a ball on the opposite side of her chair. Aww. Please don't tell me these two are contestants. Why? Over on the couch is the only other contestant in the room, a mess that is too into texting to get a stylist to work on a miracle on their look. The baggy shirt and huge rim glasses, the blonde hair that looks worse than mine after sleeping for a whole day. Are they actually a contestant? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Will somebody do something about this? Oh great, she must be the boss of this whole thing. I hear her heels uh, actually clicking in her wake as she w makes her way over to snatch their phone away. Probably until they brush their hair. <coughs> I mean, just... 
I, I feel like I thought you could be the producer. I see that jerk won't answer your text. Wait, so this isn't about Blondie's hair? Adam is not usually like this. I'm worried something might have happened to him. Boss tosses the phone back to Blondie and literally rolls her eyes. And I am mighty worried my wallet is going to deflate if he doesn't show up soon. What am I going to fill his showtime with? At least that's the same. It's always about money with her. Maybe if Blondie colored their hair neon orange and sh shaved half of it off along those zigzag lines, she'd be even more pleased. If it's outrageous, viewership goes up. She's the one that makes the big bucks around here, so no one seems to question her logic. Oh, are, you, are we talking about the girl in the red coat or the one in the baggy shirt? Did somebody call me? That voice, those sparkles, it can only be... Who? Oh, who's this person? The host, of course. He floated out of the changing room gracefully in his usual fashion, the attire just as sparkly as always. What's even more sparkly than his jacket is by far his name, Jacques Bellevance. He's not even French, but the thought of it sounded cool. Of course the boss thought it was unique enough to go along with it. I am so sorry if I pronounce, mispronounce names, so just heads up. But if he's not even French, French, why, why is he named Jacques Bellevance? Oh, that could be his stage name? I, I mean, what? I'm kind of curious what his real name is. Oh my dear Katya, I shall defy, defend your wallet with my life. It is just filling in for a couple minutes. I can be talking about gelato and I know the audience won't change the channel. I'm sure you can blind the audience with just your flashy costume for this episode, but we can't have you filling in for the missing guy forever after. We have an elimination contest here after all. It's plastered all over the ads that our grand final showdown is at the end of the month. With the contestants short, what are we going to do? Have everybody sing the national anthem and then put on a football game? That might not actually be such a bad idea. Jacques, please. I'm not in a mood when I can practically feel my bills slip away into nothingness, and I can almost hear that jerk from Teabag TV laughing the rest of his butt off at my misery. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are we, like, in a... Like, is this also, like, competition with the other reality TV shows? If she's not in the mood for Jacques, the household name for entertainment, I don't know if she'd be in the mood for me and her water. Is the director pulling a prank on me or something? Even if he hates me, he can't be thinking of digging me a hole so I get fired, right? Are you the water bearer? The boss suddenly turns to me and points at the water bottle in my hands. Water bearer? So now I'm rele relegated to the humble post of water bearer? Oh my goodness. No. Um, yes! Yes, ma'am! Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry with what happened, just, just what came out of my mouth. She takes the bottle from me and seems about to turn away until she stops and looks at me from top to bottom. You have a pretty face, don't you? Um, thank you? Jacques, who is this little girl? It shouldn't be a surprise that the producer doesn't know me, but wow, she could have asked me the question directly, right? I don't know either, a stray cat perhaps? Now that is just cold, and I used to watch the silly children's quiz shows you hosted too. Seriously, how old is he then? I'm Alice, I'm the new intern, man. So she is a stray cat, or kitten. Please dig me a hole and let me rest in peace. Reality is too harsh to bear. <coughs> you think she can sing? Oh, wait, what? Um, no, I can't. I like how she says no, but then later on she'll probably reveal that she's really good or something. Don't we take interns from the Priestley School of Arts? But I wasn't enrolled in that program. Well, you were technically enrolled in a different art program. So that means she can sing. Tracy, make her presentable. Rob, tell her what to do on stage. We're going live in 30, understand? Who's grabbing my arm? Why is Tracy making me sit in this chair? Oh my goodness. Boss is already out of the door and Jacques has his back turned, focusing on the script. Did that just... I'm pretty sure, yeah, all of this is happening. But this is how she relates to the title or something. Wait, I can't really sing in public. You don't want me on national TV. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supernova, the brand new not so average singing contest show hosted by your not so average host, Jacques Belvans. Thank you, thank you, you are all so kind. I shall ensure you, our esteemed audience, the most blood boiling, heart wrenching viewing experience of the month as you journey with our contestants. Oh my goodness, I'm the worst host ever. Now, without further ado, let's introduce our first contestant, Mary Viswanathan! I'm sorry if I mispronounced names. The dark-skinned girl from before, I guess she's up first. Good thing too, because I can't stop shaking. How did I get roped into this? The, like, Katya just looks at you and she's like, 
to the right stage. She, of course, got every note perfect. I'd be locked in a trance by the music if I wasn't about to be pushed on the stage next. There's no way I can do that. I look like a little kid singing Mary Had a Little Lamb. If you think that's all we have to deliver, you're wrong. Let's now listen to our second contestant's self-selection, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Welcome, Raisa Cheringle. What's who? Are you kidding me? I don't even get the comfort of singing a nursery rhyme. I'm surprised they even allow nursery rhymes on the TV show. Cherry goes on to deliver the most amazing performance of Mary Had a Little Lamb I've ever heard. Like seriously, how can she make it sound like a masterpiece? Oh gosh, and the boss is eating it up. Is that a handkerchief in her hand? Is she like crying and going, <laughs> or is she just blowing her nose like, <laughs> No way to make a noise with my mouth. She's worthy of my pres gunka. What the heck is a pres gunka? Well, how's it like pronounced? Please gunka? What the heck is a pres gunka? Uh, I'm sorry, boss, but what is a pres gunka? My thoughts exactly! My thoughts exactly. I'm probably gonna have to Google search the word later to find out what the heck it means. You have much to learn, child, if you don't know what pres gunka is the most delicious soup in the world. Oh. Okay. That's what it is then? So Cherry is worthy of soup. Wait, is her name Cherry? But Jack says it's rice and... No, that can't be right. Cherries and raisins? That sounds like fruit toppings on a bowl of cereal. So wait, Cherry's real name is Raisa, but she likes to be called Cherry. Oh, okay. Okay, well, Cherry sounds a lot better. And now we have a third contestant, a net musician with perfect nerdy charm. Taylor Warren, the stage is now yours. The light dims, the keyboard notes sound between gentle strums of guitar. The audience is captured, their glow sticks waving with the rhythm of the melody. Taylor's thin voice begins the main theme. There's a subtle shaking corresponding with the lyrics of how humanity is so small and fragile. But that's not to say her scene is weak. The, it's really the contrary. I may not be an expert, but I know it takes a lot of skill to sound each note with such accuracy. Control the volume so precisely that each word comes clear and penetrates the audience, but doesn't overwhelm. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm going to lose my voice at the end of this. I really can't do it, boss. I Wait, I thought... Wait, I'm so confused. Weren't we getting water for a producer or the boss? I, I'm so confused. You're in show, but the the biz. But I'm not trying to be in the star. Oh, silly! You enter the entertainment industry without the dream of shining on stage. Ridiculous! Utterly ridiculous! Sorry, had to. I had, just had to put that joke in there. I don't think I can argue with the boss about this. She won't understand. You're gonna delude yourself into thinking you're satisfied running errands backstage. Suit yourself. I'm not your counselor. You kind of do look like a counselor, so, uh, sort of. But let me tell you this, you missed this chance. You won't get another one. The world doesn't stop spinning so you can be observed into your self-pity. I mean, absorbed. Derp. You think you aren't good enough for this? Who gives a jerk? Who gives a wow? Sitting here thinking you aren't gonna th make you better, go out there and just do whatever you can. Or sitting here thinking ain't gonna make you better, go out there and just do whatever you can. Blah. Okay, I'm... Okay. If you are lose, a producer somewhere might still spot your comedic talents. Not everybody can pull off an epic failure, you know? I'm trying to change some words around to make it less brutal. Um, I, I can't actually be smiling at this, right? But I am. Wow. Wow, indeed. Um, I'll try my best. Nice, Alice. That's it, my kid. Now go earn me a wad of cash. I don't honor just anybody with that opportunity any day. And now, let me introduce our last contestant, a recent graduate from the Presley School of Arts. Humble intern, working diligently on tasks big and small. She has a dream to sing here for you. Today, she'll fulfill it. Welcome, Alice Carroll. I mean, welcome, Alice Carroll. He doesn't really, like, you know, emphasize the name. I step onto the stage. The lights are so blinding. But when I stare out into the audience below, all is dark. For a moment, it's terrifying. But as my eyes adjust to the lighting, I can see the first row of audience members. Then the second, and then more. And it just keeps piling up. They're all watching me. The teenage lovebirds, smiling seniors, parents with toddlers on their laps. For a second, I feel like I can't breathe. But as the first few notes of my song fade in, I open my mouth and I sing. Okay. Oh, the lights are bright, the music's ready, come on, let's go, and the beat is steady. What? What? Oh no, no one heard it, right? Um, wait, what was I supposed to do? Oh, I'm supposed to click on the words! Durr! I'll fulfill my dreams, Jacques says. Oh my goodness, look at the art style! That looks so cool. And he was right, so was Boss. I was the only one who'd never realize. Yeah, your true potential. Who enters this industry without at least the slightest silver of hope that we'd one day capture the crowd's attention? The audience members be below aren't the only ones watching. There are thousands, if not millions more, watching behind television screens. 
Just the thought that my voice is being projected from so many speakers nationwide is making me warm inside. I can't disappoint them. I may not have long, but with that, what little screen time I may have been given, I will make it count. So this is kind of how she gets into stardom. After the show, we were herded onto a bus and shipped to a gigantic somewhere in the city. At first I thought it was a shopping center, but that's just the ground floor. The upper floors are all part of a huge private residence. Is this real silk for curtains? No, the actual question should be for this real silk beneath my feet. I could probably wear this rug as an exotic wedding dress and all my guests would be singing praises to its beauty. And the faint scent coming from the cabinet in the corner. That's the girl wood, right? It's now a threatened species, so there's no way you can require such a big piece for furniture. The cabinet must be then a legit antique. Holy muffins, this is too much. My head hurts just thinking over how many digits went into the cost of, for the furnishings. Probably millions and billions, gazillions. Just a lot of money. Alright guys, here's the place you'll be staying in for the next month. Learn all you can from our teachers and prepare yourself to rock the stage. You'll be fighting for a chance to stay on next week's episode. Boss voice shakes me back to reality, like snaps me back into reality. Wait, are we going to be living here? Of course, haven't you read the contest description? Point is, you'll use the chance to learn from each other, learn from our teachers, and bring the competition up a notch. <coughs> it's all about putting on the best show for your audience. And make her the most money. Blingage. It's all about the money, 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 don't money. No, that's not what I should be thinking right now. That's more a more immediate problem. I have read the comp contest description and I know about this, but I'm not a real contestant, right? I should have been eliminated today, right? Why is the, wait, why is the text getting smaller? Or it's just probably me. Uh, say you read the contest description. Today isn't even the elimination round. Besides, when the other contestants get eliminated, most of them will stay here for a time. It's an opportunity to further yourself and help others. Consider it as a generous offer from our production team. Wow. I'm not, uh, no, I'm sure it's because you want to stir drama between the contestants, then take it to the media as a cheap way for promoting the show. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's in mostly TV shows. Like, they need drama for money ratings. Do I really need to be a part of this? The question should be, do you want to be a part of this? The answer is yes. There's no other way. Uh, should I give her a voice? Like a, I don't know. Like, I can say no. It's either stay or quit my job. Who wouldn't pick this luxurious mansion over a homeless shelter? Oh, wait, is Alice homeless or something? Shark shows us around the house for a tour along with the other contestants. This place is so huge, so lavish that I feel like I've been dumped into some sort of wonderland. Ah, uh, like Alice in Wonderland? Eh, you, you get that? No, okay. This is a lounge, designer chairs, and an ultra high definition TV. Love the surround sound systems too. Great place to relax in good company. Oh my goodness. I may be the one most at shock because of this turn of events, but I see that some of the others are a little surprised too. Sure, they expected the mansion, but the scale of the things probably exceeded their wildest imaginations. Like, <laughs> because they probably had stuff, but that's just a little overkill. Taylor has slowed to take in the everything, her mouth gaping a little. Only Mary seems nonchalant, walking with crossed arms and closed eyes for dramatic effect. She's like, okay, so she, she's the sassy character. I suppose this house meets my standards. <sighs> Barely. Cherry seems an awestruck as I am. If not for Taylor towing, towing her along, she'd be stuck gawking outside the door. <laughs> I just kind of picture her just going, what? <laughs> I, I actually do picture that happening. You can farm pigs? Pigs? Really? I mean, this place is so big, I'd fit a herd of buffaloes. Sascrophia domesticus, cute to look at and delicious to eat. There's nothing more I'd like in life than to open a pig farm. Oh, I, I can see she's kind of more of like a country farmer type of girl. I don't see the logic, but I'm pretty sure she got that line from an anime. Sosha? Oh, Sosha? Do you own the house? If I did, I already have retired. Ha ha ha. I have been living here for a while though. Perks of working for this company. So wait, who's the actual owner? The director is on the ground floor next to the shopping district, and the producer is at the penthouse overlooking the rooftop garden. Wait, I thought it would be the other way around, but okay. So this is the dining hall. A real chandelier above the dining table? Wow. Oh, of course it's a real chandelier. Are there fake chandeliers? There could be. I doubt I can find the appetite for food when I can practically taste the wasted cash that went into this room. Sure, Taylor sort of spills the mood, but I'm inclined to support her. Imagine eating instant ramen on this table long as my bedroom back home. I feel ashamed. I mean, cause you're try you don't want to take, you know, get you'll get furnishing, Taylor. Just sink into the one of the chairs and you wouldn't want to get up. I, I feel like Alice just doesn't want to take too much advantage of this stuff. Anyways, the lighting makes the food look sparkly. Oh, and wine, yes. Clear and deep, but shining like rubies. Ooh, ooh la la, c'est la vie. 
Oh gosh. Really? Ooh la la, says Lovey. Please, Jacques, don't make a fool out of yourself with your half butt front. What? Francis. I'm so. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. And of course, here is your training ground, fully soundproof. You can sing to your heart's content and you wouldn't startle a fly in the hallway. Not that there would be flies here, oh dear lord. Practice with your own instruments if you like, or if you're feeling ambitious, try out the ones new in here. Repair parts and service are also available in the shop down the hall. Everything's set for you up to your skills in no time. As you should all know, your faces and bodies are no less important than your voices. You gotta keep up your appearances when you're working in this business. Yeah, you can't just let it all go. Okay. Here's the place to keep fit with certified instructors to aid your training every day, nine to five. What is this thing? What is what thing? It's a skiing simulator. Is it really such a big deal? Yeah, I'm curious. So what the heck is a skiing simulator? A big deal of video C. That's what. I don't see it simulating the crisp scent of winter pine and soft powder beneath my boots. Cherry isn't listening though. While we are having this conversation, she has already coerced one of the staff members to teach her how to use the machine. This is amazing. The very peak of engineering science. You, s you said that about the lawnmower. Oh my gosh, Jerry. I rest my face in my palms. I don't know if I'm overwhelmed by the sheer extravagance of everything or is it just my companion's absurdity. Eh, probably both. A little bit of both. For those who enjoy water sports, there are pools adjacent to this room. One of which is equipped with a wave generator. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't you just feel very spoiled when you're just staying here for a month? Pools? Why yes, do you perhaps need a baby pool? I know how to swim, thank you very much. So there are some of the features we have in this mansion. I take it too much time to walk you through all of them. So feel free to explore on your own. Oh my goodness, thank you. Cause you trying to give the tour and narrating in a lot. Ugh, turning my voice. Now I'm sure you're all tired after everything you've done today. Let me show you your rooms. Jacques is right, I am tired. Probably the most tired of everybody. After all, I'm not even supposed to be here. I guess I'll leave a text for Ma to make sure she knows I'll be leaving here for the month. Don't want her to visit my apartment only to find that I'm not even there. Oh, so she's not really homeless, but she just has a probably not a very good apartment. She'll probably ask her to do me a favor of clearing out the fridge too. I don't want to go home next month to the odor of cabbage. I lie down on the other side's bed with overfluff fluffy pillows, probably filled with the finest of feathers. Feathers of a swan, I believe. I was about to complain how my salary can't even afford the flipping sheets, but the comfort lures me to the sleep before I can formulate the sentence in my head. I just instantly hit the pillow and then you're like <laughs> I, I feel like that's a lot of people they're just so exhausted and they want to complain and they try to think it in the head and they instantly hit the pillows lights out Ugh, I somehow couldn't sleep at all and I still slept like a log last night I, it doesn't feel real none of this is well I mean I'm, I'm glad that Alice is not trying to take advantage of the spoil, spoilings do they feel the same way there was a bit of an awkward tension in the air Taylor and Mary didn't look at all too happy to be here worse still Cherry wasn't here yet Usually she was pretty good at making things a little less uneasy. So, this is nice. A full breakfast, just us girls, pretty neat. Hmm, seems a little calculated to me. You don't see the cameraman off to the sides. Just like secret cameras filming your conversations and everything. They're more interested in preparing some dumb direct to video featurette. You sure you want to mention that out loud? <coughs> I mean, cameras could be what? Cameras could be everywhere, good man. Oh, they'll edit it out. <laughs> They didn't cut the crust off my French toast. You said jits, the lot of them. Okay, they're definitely not cutting out that part. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mary, didn't anyone ever tell you that there's no cutting corners on the road to stardom? <laughs> Seriously, Taylor? It's so early in the morning for your insufferable tone. <laughs> I am sorry if your name is Mary and I'm making you sound very sassy. Your name, I mean, I didn't have a competent comment prepared. I feel like Taylor's smug, holier, and all that stuff. We're all still competitors. I figured your skin would be thicker after surviving all the plur blah, rounds, but I suppose not. Of course, I can't imagine a girl who didn't have to work for anything in her life would understand. Excuse me, where do you come off, you mouthy prompress? Hi, guys! Oh, thank goodness it's Cherry. Oh, good thing she had to butt in at that time. Before their cat fight could escalate any further, Cherry bounced along into her seat, being probably happy. Pretty and cheerful. Ooh, pancakes! Can we get any shapes like rabbits? Oh, I bet they have this pancake artist like those videos online. Cherry, Cherry, put your phone away. It's bad manners. Uh, but they're really cool. They make cartoon characters and stuff. I'm more curious about coffee art myself. I wonder if they make requests. I doubt the producer is willing to pay out of pocket for baristas that can do that. Things cooled off between the four of us quickly. Cherry had that calming effect on people, even as Taylor and Mary kept at each other's at arm's length. Like, trying to gash at each other's throats. 
I suppose the ex execs want us all to start training together and to get along more. True. Obviously, only the best for our adoring fans. We're getting to practice together! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> it looks like we're all going to be spending a lot more time together. Better fill up here. The next few days are going to be big. And very, very big. Now, where should I spend the day? Go to the makeup room, music room, or to the mall. Ooh, maybe music room? Like, practice up on our singing and voice and everything? I decide to head over to the music hall. It is a little late to get personal time with the trainers, but I could probably get some solo practice in. Nice. There aren't many people here, just custodial staff and the odd security guard. What do you mean by odd? A few of them would look at me with this weird sidelong glance and then continue to go about their business. I guess I'm not really a celebrity yet, or they're just professionals. Yeah, they're just professionals, Alice. Well, let's see, I should exercise my, huh? As I raise my hand to my throat to try and massage my vocal cords, some murmuring breaks the silence. It was coming from backstage, just a little to the right in the total silence of the big empty music hall. I could make out someone's voice. Who is it? Who's that little what's a butt? Who's cutie patootie? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, what? I'm confused. Like, who? It was a man's voice. It was speaking total nonsense. Who the heaven was he speaking to? It couldn't have been to me, right? There was barely anyone else here. My curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to go investigate. I wonder who it could be. Oh, it's the director! Oh, I miss you guys so much. Daria, get them all together, okay? I am so sorry. Holy muffins. It was the director! Hunched over his tablet! I could see the see on the screen he was watching a live stream of a puddle of kittens. <gasps> I want to see that now! There's Jean and there's Marco and Tuna and Leia and oh, Lily Stungston! I love you guys! But Daddy needs to do his job, okay? <gasps> oh my gosh! He calls himself Daddy to the kittens. Oh my gosh! Who's there? Oh, poop. I try to make a quick getaway, but my leg doesn't cooperate. It gets caught up in cables. I fall to the ground with a thud. I try to spin around to get back onto my feet quickly, but I met with the director's fuming expression. Oh goodness. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here! I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I was just getting some practice, and uh... Practice in your room, you louse! You buffoon! You absolute dingus! I'm trying not to actually shout, so... Because I'm... Okay. That was my cue to get the hell out of there as quickly as my legs could. I glanced behind me to check if the enraged director is chasing me. <laughs> like Steve coming out of his ears and his face full of, like, red of fury. To my surprise and my relief, he had his back turned to me. Probably back watching the kitties. Oh no, daddy didn't mean to find you little snooky wookies. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, why? It has been a long day. Oh, I can't breathe now. I can't breathe. Ugh. After dinner, I took a shower, brushed my teeth, and headed off to bed, but somehow I couldn't sleep. Oh my goodness. I dragged myself up to a sitting position and just stay like that, hunched over my bed for a moment. Should I turn on the lights away for a bit? I haven't finished the paperback I've been reading on my commutes, but before coming here, uh, but if I start now, I doubt I could stop. Maybe I should do something else. I decided to take a walk. The night outside looked lovely. Oh my goodness, it looks so beautiful. I take the elevator to the roof where the garden stands. Oh my goodness, the, like the rainbow fountain, that's beautiful. At this hour, it's quite dark, but parts of the garden remain lighted with panels of lead lights. The fountain looks stunning with colors playing on the ripple, rippling water surface. I sit down on the stone by the fountain, hearing the water rise and fall. Looking upwards, I can faintly make out the stars above me. Oh, I want to see the beautiful stars. It's too bright here in the city to see the star curtains, but the few twinkling lights in the dark heavenly sea still look beautiful as rare gems. Oh my goodness. It's weird that I prefer, prefer, prefer this view over the view looking overlooking the rest of the city. The view overlooking, oh my god. Was I speaking too quick and I lost the track? We're easily on one of the tallest buildings in town, but there is something more enticing about nature, especially at a time like this. What, like, it's, I mean, <laughs> while looking down at the, all the houses and streets below may give a feeling of power and entitlement, looking at the endless expanse above is far more liberating. Oh, I really want to see this in person now. It's a little cold here by night, but the crisp, clean feeling is nothing less amazing. It makes my worries slip away one by one. All right, I can do this. Yeah, Alice, you can do this. 
I need not care about how others view me. I need not care about the outcome of this challenge. I just need to try as hard as I can. Until we, like, you know, leave the competition. I'd be able to live up to myself then. Nice, Alice. Empowered with renewed confidence, I snuggled back into bed. I may like the rooftop garden, but there's nothing better than a warm bed on a cold night. Same. You just want to get, like, cuddled up like a warm teddy bear. With the weight of all my precious finally lifting away, I drift off into sleep. Ah, it's morning. Sweet morning. Oh my goodness, I just also noticed the picture in the background. There's a bunny on there. I can't recall my dreams, so I must have had some decent sleep. I feel rested enough. Wow, I didn't even know my back could crack that much. These beds are really amazing. All right, time to go to the washroom and make myself presentable before breakfast. Oh yeah, you don't want to have that messy bed hair and that bad bed breath. I mean, you gotta make a good first impression, and plus you can't be walking around in PJs with other people in, that you don't know in the house. But good morning. Morning. How are you feeling today? I guess I'm fine. What's for breakfast? Here's the selection for today. Ooh. Oh wait, we get to pick a breakfast? I'm still not really used to ordering from a menu. It's like eating at a restaurant, except you don't have to pay the bill. I mean, yeah, it's kind of free weird but i'll have some pancakes <gasps> yummy pancakes as always they're delicious it doesn't take long before i gobble it all up taylor keeps staring at her phone while i'm eating and jacques is busy talking about a precious previous show to one of the waitresses wait waitresses oh my gosh that that's insane i usually eat breakfast in my dorm room all alone and it's usually something terribly inept like a protein bar or ramen so it's nice to have company in the room with you for a change yeah, at least you can talk to people while you eat. Now that you're done, what are you going to do for the rest of the morning? Oh. Go to the makeup room, stage, or to the mall. Um, maybe the mall? I mean, it would be cool to see what the mall looks like. I decided to check out the mall today. It's not far from the production studio, and I'm pretty excited to shop around. Yeah, like, you know, window shop, take a look at some stuff. I mean, like, look at the photo, like, the stuff here. Being smack dab in the middle of the big city has its perks. This stuff in these stores, you can't find anywhere else. Like, clearly. And it's so big! I could spend all day here, but I shouldn't. I don't want to miss the rehearsals. Yes. Because we, I mean, it's gonna be bad, but... Alice! Oh, Cherry's calling me. Oh, hello! Before I knew it, Cherry darted from the crowds and collided with me head on. Wow. I mean, hi, Cherry. I mean, you're kind of close up in my face. But what are you doing here? L let go of my collar. Oh, she's grabbing onto my collar? Like, ah, that was really close to my face. Alice, Alice, it's an emergency. A total catastrophe. Cherry was absolutely hysterical. Tears were forming in the corner of her eyes. Oh, really? What happened? What happened, Cherry? Is there a fire? A stampede? An avalanche? Alice, what do you mean by avalanche? <laughs> yeah, I'm confused as well. Um, I, I mean, they have an indoor ski resort in the malls like these. It's not completely out of the question. Uh, well, it's worse than all those things. Um, okay, Cherry, take it easy. Deep breaths, okay? In and out. I help Cherry come to her senses, the both of us practicing our deep breathing exercises. That's also good for vocal warm-ups. When the two of us were sufficiently calmed down, I grabbed her shoulders. Okay, Cherry, tell me everything. I, I looked up and down this whole mall, and they don't have the Kettleman's tomato sauce chips I like. I know it says ketchup, but, um, I'm, I say it in English way. What? Tomato sauce chips? I mean, wait, is that a thing? I'm actually kind of curious if those are a thing, and I would try them. Yeah, I can't find it anywhere! Oh, so, so wait, she was crying over chips, her favorite flavored chips. Cherry was quickly winding herself right back up again. I have to say something. That sounds nasty, or can't you just order it online, or maybe we can get something else. Um... Ugh. I'm thinking between can't you just order it online, or maybe we can get something else. Um... Uh, what's a good choice? I mean, I probably, in my opinion, I would probably try and distract her and say get something else. So let's do that option. Well, this is a pretty big mall. Maybe we could find something else. Whee! I was really excited, though, to try some tomato sauce chips. There's a nice chocolatilla towards the end of the mall, and there's crepes. Do you like crepes? Oh my goodness, crepes. Crepes are pretty good. I mean, I tried it, too, a while ago. Oh, I want to try them again. It's 
in forever. Cherry was warm enough to the idea. Her mind was not focusing on the tomato sauce chips. We can swing by the pet shop too. Take a look at the kitties and the birds. Oh, and the rabbits. They're huge, like this big. They got nothing on the ones running around my grandpappy's farm. Oh, so... Do you, you, so your grandpa lives on a farm? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 kind of like a country girl. Cherry's good cheer was back to its usual splendor. Pity about the tomato sauce chips. Probably better to avoid bringing it up for now. I think that went okay. Yeah, that went pretty okay indeed. Cherry and I did a lap around the mall, checking out the storefronts along the way. We spotted plenty of deals, but neither of us were rich and famous to splurge at that point. Yeah, don't get too greedy now. This was fun. Thanks for hanging out with me, Alice. No problem. It was great bumping into you. You heading back to the studio? In a bit, I'm going to swing back and see if I can get some stuff to make my own tomato sauce chips. And then when I control the supply, I'll live forever! Oh my goodness, Cherry. You're a little overdramatic. <laughs> what just happened? You just went side screen swipe. swipe well, alright. Godspeed. <laughs> Cherry just went zoom off to one side and then zoom off to the other side. But she's dedicated. I'll give her that. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. Whoa, and it's already nighttime now. It has been such a hectic day. I almost didn't want to eat dinner, but knowing I'd be hungry at night otherwise, I stuffed something down my stomach, took a shower, brushed my teeth, and headed off to bed. Interesting uh, time schedule. If not for the soundproof doors and walls, I'm sure I'd still be able to hear sounds of activity outside. The others are probably in the lounge watching a movie. I would have joined them, but I'm just too tired. My muscles are screaming to be relaxed. I can only comply. So... So your body was like taut eared and your brain's like, okay. I lie down on the bed, relieved that the soft mattress comforts you. I'm s I am close my eyes and immediately stop thinking that darkness envelopes me before and before I knew it, I fell asleep. Another contest already. And it is it just me or was that stage always like that? You look nervous, kid. Now that I'm back at the studio, I can't even fathom how I got past these last few days. Oh, I just also realized that Alice is in a different shirt. How do you do it? Do what? Be all composed like that. You're up in front of thousands of people, I mean hundreds of people and probably millions behind the TV. Didn't you do it last week too? I groan. I need not to be reminded. Oh yeah. Stressful times. She probably was in shock last week. Didn't even realize what she was doing. Very funny, Taylor. And you just look like chill today. But she's probably right. Even when I think back to what I did on stage, it's all a blur. I think I sang my favorite song. This week though, I have to pick from a selection, but I barely heard the song prior to practicing it. The others are taking this rather calmly though. Cherry is in a corner giggling at her phone. Mary is arguing over the jewelry. I sigh. Might as well get this over with. Yeah, I mean, we might be going home. To match the summer theme for this week's contest, I'm wearing a purple crop top and black shorts. My attire isn't anything too glaring, but those red heels, they're so hard to walk in. Oh. You better thank me for catching you, you clumsy. When I try to walk over to the jewelry and prop counter, I nearly fall face first onto the linoleum floor. Luckily, Mary manages to steady me with her outstretched arms. What the heck, linoleum? What is, what does Lino Liu mean? Am I pronouncing it right? I'm sorry if I'm not. I mean, sorry. I didn't ask for an apology. I asked for a word of gratitude. Thank you, princess, or sure thanks. Um, sure thanks. I don't want to sound mean. Sure, thanks for catching me. And I don't know if I should keep the sassy voice going on. You know what? I'll probably just talk in my normal voice, but better. Mary holds my hand and guides me over to the seat beside hers. She's wearing some platform shoes herself, but looks graceful as a swan while she glides along the floor. You can pass off as a feetless ghost sliding down the hall, Mary. I, on the other hand, am like an elephant trying to dance. Crude humor as always, but I like it. I also like your outfit, Mary. Oh, and they do a better dance than you. Trust me. Has she worked at a circus training elephants? I wouldn't put it past her to do something super exotic like that. Then again, Mary is so seemingly rich and pretty and perfect that she probably owns the circus instead. Oh my gosh, if, if she did own the circus, I'm probably sure it'll be named after her. I trust you, but do you really have to say that? If you don't like it, consider improving. Well, whatever. Heels are a symbol of pa patriarchy's oppression of women. Oh my goodness, I hope I'm pronouncing these words right. Wrong. High heels have been depicted in Egyptian murals from 3500 BC, worn by the nobility, women, and men alike. They were also worn by butchers to walk over animal carcasses. Is that an actual fact, or... I'm actually going to have to try and Google search that later to find out if that is actually a true fact, or if it's just a made-up fact. 
Persian horse riders from the 9th century also wore heels to held, help hold their feet in stirrups. If anything, it is your view that you are obliged to wear heels for the viewing pleasure of men that is oppressive. Oh yeah, nowadays it's mostly women that wear heels, like, you know, get a bit taller. You should embrace heels as a positive fashion choice to make yourself look good, for your own confidence and joy. Yeah, look good, feel good, and look, and look a little taller too. Rich, pretty, perfect, and smart too? Maybe Mary should change her last name to Sue. Or whatever it said. Philosophical debates about feminism aside, I just can't do this. The heels make me sort of lean forward, and I keep feeling as though I trip. Wait, yeah, philosophical. That's because you aren't confident enough. Say you're so what? Yeah, yeah, Alice. That's my. T t that's me as well. What? And I'm oh my gosh, she's blushing. Just say it. I can feel heat rush into my cheeks, especially when the nearby staff all seem to turn around to look at me right this moment. Even Cherry and Taylor pause. What are they doing? Oh my goodness, they're looking at me. I I'm so sexy. <laughs> Wait, oh my gosh, why did I say that? Yeah, dream on, Auntie. Now get that makeup on and meet me up on the stage by 10. All of you too. Hurry up and get your butts moving. Oh my gosh. What a bad timing. I feel like my head's about to blast apart from embarrassment. Now look at yourself in the mirror. What's that shameful face for? Uh, what do you think? The director heard me. And that's embarrassing. I want to hide myself under some sand. Shouldn't have trusted Mary. Who cares what he thinks? You are sexy and you know it. Now lift your chin up, arch your back, show your curves, swing that pretty bottom of yours, move like you own the floor, and I assure you that you won't fall. Wow. That's actually great advice, but the sexy and you know it part, that's actually a song. Uh, you're asking the impossible. I'm not a model. Same. I mean, me, same. Well, I have worked as a model, so I know it isn't impossible. Right, it makes total sense for Mary to be a supermodel. She's probably also the daughter of a billionaire and could communicate with eight animal species through tel telepathy. That would be kind of cool, though. Like, telepathy powers? While I'm musing about such useless things, Mary stands up and walks towards the exit, leaving only a pat on my shoulder. The show is going to start soon, and I'm up first. You better advance, too. The arrogant way that Mary is speaking should be irritating, but it's somewhat comforting to know that someone supports me. Have I possibly made a friend? Well, I promise to try my best. Welcome again to your most spectacular idol show of the year, Supernova. I am your host, Jacques Bellevant. Last time we introduced our four contestants. You've had the chance to see their unique glory, taking your pick about who will make it to the throne of stardom's next idol. Now our contestants will be pitted against each other. Oh, now this is where the actual competition starts, probably when we lose. Only the best will remain. One will be eliminated tonight. I think he also mentioned that the elimination the last time, but nothing happened. So without further ado, I lend you applause to our first contestant, Mary. The bright lights shine down on Mary's shining black hair. Her dark skin gleams while she waves at the audience, drawing roaring applause. Charming, cheerful music blares out to the speakers, and Mary starts dancing along with it, her peaked colored dress whirling into the rhythm. Though her performance last week was elegant and formal, she completely changed her style today. Her voice is one of joy and life, skipping easily with the beat of drums and cymbals. She's smiling wide like the summer sun, absolutely stunning in her radiance. The crowd becomes more excited as the chorus takes her nose higher, their glow sticks pounding the air. I stare at the scene, only realizing then that I've been mouthing the words of her lyrics. Captivating. Thank you very much for that wonderful performance, Mary. Let's see how our next contestant holds up. Raisa Cherenkov, you're up next. Is it Raisa or Raisa? The simple piano accompaniment rolls through the air with Cherry's soothing voice. There is also something youthful about her singing. The song itself is on a mid-tempo, soft and delicate like the raindrops the lyrics describe. Cherry takes these raindrops from the skies, letting them drip onto shallow puddles, rippling lakes, great oceans. There is both something small and relatable, and something larger and more meaningful in what she expresses. This girl is really something special. Her technique can use further polishing, but her talent is undeniable. She can be missing half the notes and most people won't even notice. She missed some notes? She sang one of the lines almost completely different from the original. But if she sounds better, I doubt anybody would care about the original. I have never heard this song, so I can't really comment on it, but seriously, sounding better than the original. Is that even possible? A friend of mine wants to sign the girl into his record company after hearing her Mary Had a Little Lamb last week. Can you believe it? If I had the money, I would. To be good, so good that even Taylor would willingly admit her talents. That's amazing. 
I take it that you aren't going to go down without a fight, Taylor. Uh, though, Taylor. I am not fighting. I just think I'm not necessarily less skilled than her. Oh. She beats me in potential. I will admit that much. But I am far more experienced. Oh, okay. Wow. She's a mininess. Thank you, Raisa. That was beautiful. Next up, we have Taylor Warren. Eraser, whatever the heck it's pronounced. Show us what your experience will do for you then. Taylor sure is no match for Cherry appearance-wise. While both of them went for the summer theme, Cherry matched with her rosy wreath with a delicate pink dress. Taylor just put on the same faded blue t-shirt as last week. Just like, didn't care. Just like, whatever. I suppose this stubborn attitude does give her a unique kind of charisma. Though once again, she opts for minimal background music while she sings, opening the song with smooth falsetto. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. About there are so many words that I hope I'm pronouncing right or mispronouncing. Uh, would it be accurate to call her singing wailing? That would give it a negative connotation, would it? But I mean it in a good way. Actually, there is so much emotion. But if I were to try to convey such sadness and regret, I would have tried for a stronger sound. I would have tried to sing my lungs out. Taylor does no such thing. She doesn't even try, apparently. <laughs> She has so much control at even pitches, difficult for me to reach, switching easily to lower tones for drastic, powerful effects. The song originally, a summer tune, about some generic campus, transforms to a bittersweet, nostalgic kind of sound. The simple metallic notes are underlain by hints of darkness and remorse. Why is it that Taylor is always depressed? Why does she want to express this on stage? So much I don't understand, but her voice propels me to try. The more I listen, the more I want to know. I'm being carried away by her message. The crowd is silent after her performance. She bows and leaves us stunned in our spots. Kitty, you better snap out of it before you get up there. What, Kitty? You call me Kitty? What? You haven't forgotten that you're up next, right? Oh yeah, for some reason, I'm always lost. Oh, poop. That's right, this is a contest. I'm not part of the audience. I'm supposed to be a participant. Yeah, last time... We went last, so I, we're going last again. I feel like we're going to go last. Don't look so shocked. Like I said, if you can't outshine the others, then make the biggest fool out of yourself. A catastrophic failure would have entertainment value, too. Like, I want to be a failure on that level. I mean, a failure. <laughs> that was certainly a memorial performance, Taylor. Next, we have our last contestant, Alice Carroll. Woo! Yay, my girl! Sorry, I had to do that because I wanted to the awkward silence. I don't even get the chance to practice the first line of my song in my head before I get unceremoniously shoved onto the stage by my smirking boss. Poop, 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 poop. I am so not prepared for this. Oh, goodness. Please, somebody save me. Hello, my love. Goodbye, my friend. Hello, new world. Will I see you again? The times are changing, but my heart stands still. Your eyes are listless. Can I change your will? The winds are growing stronger. If you, uh, Yet I still remain. If you won't come with me, then I'll leave you in the rain. The musical accompaniment is so plain. Accompaniment. Oh my goodness. Ah, I hope I'm pronouncing these words right. It's not plain in an absolute sense, but compared to the uniqueness of Cherry and Taylor's performances, it's just so common. It's totally something a regular schoolgirl would sing at a karaoke place with her friends. Yeah. Pretty much. But is that necessarily a bad thing? I have been a regular schoolgirl till just a few months ago after graduation. I've become a regular working class young adult. I'm just a plain and ordinary girl. Nothing special. Same. I'm, a, I'm also like a working class young adult. But that's not something to be ashamed of, right? Right? I remember watching a show like this on TV, of course. You want to see the superstar in all his glory, singing so brilliantly that it need, nearly stops your heart. But what you feel is that you must worship her. He is so far away from you, so difficult to reach. His song is beautiful, yes, but it shames you to sing along. I'm not a superstar, but that doesn't mean I can't sing for them. The audience, the people just like me. What did Mary say? Chin up, back straight, show him those hips. One, two, three, four, four. Click those heels forward. Sing with me. Wait, what? <gasps> oh, the, the photo! The colorful lights play on my face. They are dazzling. They are pretty. I pour everything I have into my voice, amplifying it above the crowd's cheers. That's the photo from now for the intro with the, you know, when you first open up the game. Uh, I can see them wave along with me. I walk towards them, waving back, pumping my free hand in the air, in, high into the air with a beat. I'm no longer on the stage. I'm in a karaoke room. The music video is playing on the screen behind me, and I'm going along with it, imitating the pop idol group dancing with the tune. I'm gonna go outdo Katie's score on the karaoke machine. Nothing is going to stop me. What is there to stop me? 
I don't know. I don't care what this is a generic, that this is a generic sound. This is my sound. If what Cherry and Taylor sang were considered unique, then so is this. This is me. I should be proud of my identity, no matter what it is. This summer, I'm going to be an idol. Yeah, Alice! Woo! I know it! Such determination! Uh, my girl! Yes! Alright, so you heard all the performances from our contestants. Mary, Risa, Ch Taylor, and Alice. Now is your chance to vote for your favorite idol. Woo! Can I vote? Oh, wait, I'm... I'm the char I'm playing as a character, derp. Those in the audience, please click on the number corresponding to your contestant of choice. Those watching this show from home, please log in to the website. As the commercials play, we eagerly await the results of the poll, though I resign myself to whatever fate will befall me. I can't help but admit that I still hold on to with some hopes of advancing. Ready to pack your bags, Inti? Am I not supposed to stay even if I were to be eliminated? Wrong response. True, you'll probably stay either way, but you shouldn't even consider the possibility of elimination. Wow, thanks, Mary. I mean, shouldn't you be freaking out too? But that's a little optimistic, don't you think? Well, do you really think you did worse than the rest of us? Maybe. I didn't really say that, did I? Because I'm not crazy, good, m and much, much better than everybody else. I can't help but at least consider the possibility of elimination, right? It's not about whether that possibility is there. It's about whether to consider it. Whether to consider it? If you think you did well, just admit it. You have every right. Wow. Um, Taylor? Even if I were to be eliminated, I would still be happy to stay and help everybody else as the best I can. Cherry? Really? Eliminated? You and Taylor are the ones with the least to worry about, alright? Still, it's sorta nice to feel welcomed here. If you four are all done giggling, I believe Jacques has an announcement. Oh, are the ads over? Wow, those ads are pretty quick. And here are the results in my very hands. Who will be the winners? Who will be the loser? Dun dun dun. Taylor Warren, you are the highest scoring contestant of this round. You have advanced. Why isn't he announcing the one who lost first? Yo, you little girl, you know nothing about running a successful TV show. Your sadistic audience enjoys torturing us. Great. You mean torturing us? You've already advanced. And the next highest scoring contestant is Mary This one Offen. Congratulations, you have also advanced. After her, the next highest scorer was Risa Cherenkov. Oh shoot. Yep, we're eliminated. We're eliminated, we're done. We're gone. Lastly, Alice Carroll. Now that you've seen all the contestants, join us Saturday to see them compete again. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean by join us Saturday? Yeah, I'm confused. What do you mean by that, Jock? What do you mean? Wait, so does that mean... Am I eliminated or something? It means you'll be all performing in a few more days. Get ready. Oh, wait, we're still in? Wait, didn't he mention an elimination last time? But no one... We all made it. This wasn't an elimination round, was it? Yeah. No, it wasn't. If you have any more questions, ask me after dinner. Bye. Oh, so... A non -an okay, so it was a non-elimination. They were just saying that to scare us. Quit looking so glum. You made it past the first round. It was a freebie round. Always a freebie round with Alice. Don't be too sure about that. If you had gone up there screeching, it would have become an elimination round very quickly. Now let's go eat. Yes, let's go. All right. It's a bold new day, full of opportunity. The director was insistent that we take today to work on our dance routine. What if he didn't mention was that Taylor would be in charge of the rehearsal. She led the pack, running us through the basic steps. Well, it's a good way to remember. Hey, um, guys, why is Taylor up front? Did the director get a teacher? Taylor is the teacher. What's the producer thinking? This is probably some stunt to save money. Like, yeah, being cheap, apparently. I hear a lot of gossip back there and not a lot of dancing. Taylor called out behind her. Mary rolled her eyes and continued to practice the motions. Keep it up, girls. Behind a star is more than having a good voice. What are you doing, director? I mean, you gotta have the looks, the body movement, the swagger, and finesse. Work those hips, wink to the crowd. I feel like the director should be more of the teacher here, since he's there. Mr. Director, um, please leave the instruction to me. To her credit, Taylor was a good instructor. She made her rounds to the rest of us. Oh my gosh. Cherry, keep your legs like this, try to keep them apart like that, and we'll work on the basic steps. Okay, Th this is a little tricky. Mary, posture's important. Back straight, like this. Oh my gosh, Taylor is taking this a little too far and it's taking it over her head. Oh, come off it. I've spent my entire childhood learning posture. Well, give it a try. It's none of my business if the judges decide to cut you early. Herf. 
Alice, you're looking a little stiff over here. I, I'm still finding my feet over here. Ah, nice comeback. It's per because you're going straight to the tricky routines. Let's assess, dissect the dis deaths. Taylor spent some time with me making sure I understood the steps. Her movements were so fluid, rippling with dynamic energy. She had a bounce to her step. I envied that. Like, girl. Can you teach me more, or were you always this talented, or this is tricky? Um, were you always this talented? I'm kind of curious. Taylor, were you always this talented? Perish the thought. I had to work hard to get this far. Wow. You had to work that far. Twelve years as a competitive dancer on theater shows, choreography, it takes time. Oh, wow. Then you've done this sort of thing before, huh? That's actually impressive. Obviously, now come to... Th come on. You clearly don't have any natural aptitude, much as I love the term. I love... I love the word loathe. So you'll just have to play catch up like everyone else. I get the feeling I slighted Taylor a bit with my earlier question. Yeesh. Yes, yeesh indeed. The four of us kept at it until it was time to break for lunch. We then went our separate ways and I decided to go to Mary's room, Taylor's room, see Cherry, or go to the stage. I wanna, I'm kind of curious to go to Mary's room and then maybe later, if I still have time, probably go to Taylor's room. The stress is really eating me away. I feel sick. Like, how sick? Like, nausea is sick or just sick, but you can get over it. It's weird because I keep trying to convince myself that I have nothing to lose. I should stop caring so much. After all, even if I were to get eliminated, I would have fulfilled the purpose. If not, I would be punished or anything. Life will go on as it always has. I had to keep my job. I get to keep the old roof atop my head. All is good, right? This month will just be a little vacation. And it's for free, too. Like, what else could I have hoped for? I honestly don't know what you could have hoped for. But saying all this isn't making my heart feel any easier. I don't want to give myself any false hopes, but it just keeps coming to me either way. It, yeah. No matter which direction it comes from, it's coming from all directions. Truth is, I do want to win, huh? Even if it were impossible. The contract addiction leaves me to, in my current state. I'm just too preoccupied with those thoughts to focus on training. And yet, who can I talk to about all this? My mom? She'd just say I'm silly. It's not that she really wants to chide me, but she thinks that putting it lightly would make me feel better. Guess where I inherited these genes for, of idiocy from? They obviously have to come from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, sorry, mom. So I just end up wandering around the mansion trying to keep my mind off things. I mean, just look at everything here. So ridiculously lavish. I'm sure some exotic vase from the distant Chinese dynasty or whatnot would be enough to keep me preoccupied, maybe. Oh my goodness, so much dialogue and we haven't even gone to the room. Before I know it, I'm here, in front of Mary's room. The door is left open. Why am I even here? I mean, I've been hanging out with Mary a little, but that doesn't mean I intend to confine my problems with her. I was about to walk away when something within her room captures my gaze. It's a painting. Mary is busily working on it. Probably the reason why she has yet to notice my presence. The painting is not clean and neat. I can't exactly pinpoint what she has painted at all, but the turbulent colors resonate with my heart. Blazing hues evoke pride and confidence. Lighter yellows speak of a more subdued hope. Then all of this mingles and clashes, forming darker streaks at their interface, just like the doubts I am feeling. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to peek. Well, I already did like my denial amounts to anything. I don't mind an audience. I see. It means that you can come in and take a seat if you want. Thanks. It'd be rude if I refuse. Plus, I do actually want to take a closer look at the painting. Whoa, her room is so cool. You're so good at everything to you do, Mary. I can't help but utter this sentence. It may sound like a praise to Mary, but maybe I'm just saying it to myself to reaffirm my own incompetence. Blah. This is just a random splatter of paint. I'm sure anybody can do it. Wait, a spread you've got to be kidding. A random splatter of paint? Why would I be? Do you see anything distinct here? Um, I, ah, uh, well, no. That's because I'm not an artist. I merely enjoy the feel of putting paint on canvas. But it looks so good. The paint is good quality, yes, I suppose. I don't know what to say. Mary does sound serious here. She, so she hasn't ever had any formal artistic training? You must be really talented then. 
or I just have the guts to waste high quality paint on high quality canvas. What makes you think you can't do the same? I didn't get very high grades whenever painting is concerned. I didn't get any grades on painting because I never took a class. Now kill me. I enjoy a little laugh with Mary. She then hands her brush over to me. Oh, what is she doing? Here, give it a try. Oh, you mean on your painting? Why not? It's not as though I'm trying to sell it. And who knows, maybe after your expert fine-tuning, I'd be really... It'd be really worth the sale. I reluctantly take up the brush and wonder how I should start. What color should I use and on the painting? Mary's painting is already perfect without my tampering. Perfect just like her. Why are you hesitating? I, I don't want to make it worse. What do you mean, worse? I, I don't really know. If I knew, I wouldn't mess it up, right? Mary sighs, coming around behind me. She claps onto my hand that is holding the brush. Ooh, what's gonna happen? What's happening here? Now, Paige, if I don't like what you do, I'd be able to stop you. I bear the final responsibility here. Ah, cool. But, Mary... I, I, I mean, I'm surprised. Look, Alice, you need to be more confident. I know I'm trying. But you think the problem of your wavering is that you're not good enough to be confident. How did you... It's all over your face. At the show, while you're practicing here. Heck, while you are walking these halls. You just give off the aura of, I'm not good enough. I mean, because, yeah, clearly do. But I'm not good enough. I'm not like you. Not as rich as me. Being rich doesn't make you a better singer. But you were born in this kind of environment. You know how to act in this kind of environment, too. Which is what? To act like a common people like you would call snobs? I'm well aware of the people call me behind my back. What? That they call you a diva? Oh my gosh, you don't seem like a diva. But that's not, I do not mean to put it that way. And I do not take offense. People react differently to the environment around them. There is no right or wrong. Why can't you gawk at the beautiful furnishings and call it a waste of societal resources? I suppose I can, but that's not the issue here, right? Right? The, the rich thing, yes. I guess I have felt a little inferior because of it. And come to think of it, it is stupid. Like, sounds stupid. Very, 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 very stupid. But rich or not, you and the others are better singers. I can't change that. Yes, you can. If you work harder, if you pour your heart into it, then what? But I don't believe. Then believe. Mary plunges the brush into pure red paint and presses it against the canvas. No! It's not too late to change what I'm doing. Find me for control over the brush. I finally strengthen my grip and drag the brush in a curve down to the left side of the painting. Then with the remainder of the paint, I draw a similar curve down the right side. It's a heart. My heart. Bleeding red. These are my feelings. I want to have hope, but whenever I feel it, it's accompanied by darkness. I'm worried that I won't succeed. It's stupid, because I have no right to be asking for success to begin with. Wow. That's emotional and deep. You have every right. Didn't I draw this because it's exactly what I felt, too? You may think that I'm confident and proud, but like you said, whenever you have hope, you have to worry of not fulfilling the hope. It's like whenever there is light, a shadow would be cast. I can't quite believe Mary would have such a mundane worries too. She should have no doubts that she'd be, at least be a finalist. I think the heart you painted really completes the picture. It shows that anybody with a heart can be bothered by these conflicting emotions. It may be so painful to look like it's our hearts that are bleeding, but look, isn't the red so vivid? This must be what it means to be alive. Wow. You make everything sound so sentimental, Mary. You're the one who painted it. Did you say you were going to bear the final responsibility? We laugh together. Mary pats my shoulder, smiling. Look, Alice, we're all on the same boat. Don't doubt yourself. All of us should have the right to want to win. That's why we are here. I love Mary already. I don't know what to say. Maybe Mary is right. Even if I don't stand a chance of winning, I can still dream, though. Thanks. I think I feel better now. Knowing that you aren't the only one who thinks bold badly of yourself. Well, it came as a surprise that you also have to do these thoughts, and I hate to admit it, but yeah, I guess I do feel better knowing that I'm not alone. <laughs> Jerk. But I feel better too. I don't like being alone either. Oh my gosh. I don't know why, but I feel like there might be a sudden shift between Alice and Mary. So much has happened today. Like, oof, so much. Between Alice and Mary, oh my gosh. I would laugh if there's a ship of them. After dinner, I had fun with the others at the lounge. It's amazing considering that I never imagined this situation would happen to me. I often still struggle with the idea of being here, but sometimes I find the courage to face the things coming my way. It's an opportunity, huh? 
As much as I usually find Boss to be a vain, money-greedy wo woman, she does speak some words of wisdom occasionally, doesn't she? I'll try hard again tomorrow. I tuck myself into bed and empty out my thoughts. The unknown future is always scary, but if I were to know everything that would befall us, what fun is life if you just know everything that's gonna happen? It's okay to step into the dark. We'll find our way. Whew! I, I should have put my phone away during the morning drills. It's been buzzing all morning. We're all wrapping up right about now. It took all of my willpower not to sneak a look. Of course the director's watchful eye was keeping tabs on me all morning. I don't know if he had... I don't know, bat hearing or whatever? Like he, he was bitten by a radioactive bat and developed sonar vision or something? Oh my gosh, that would be kind of cool though! <laughs> like, instead of a radiated spider, it's a radiated bat, and you'll be like a Batman or Batgirl. Alright. Uh, oh crap, look at all these messages! No, no, wait, we already have a Superman named Batman. Uh, oh, mom sent me some cat photos. Oh no, they are dressed up! Oh, she looks ticked! Haha, <laughs> I got to say this! I open up my messages and start to draft a message for the accompanying photo. Oh, poop! My finger slipped! I was going to send it to my bestie back home, Marge, but... A phone's chiming broke my concentration. Oh, no. Alice? Oh, did I accidentally send it to Mary? I sent it to the wrong person! What is this that you sent me? Uh, T? That's my cat, Vicky! My, my mom dressed him up because he's rooting for me. <laughs> you should think of sending this to the director's phone instead of mine. It was an accident! Oh goodness, oh goodness, he'd flip his, he'd flip his poop if I was texting him! Hmm, I wonder. Without any further comment, Mary walked off as if nothing happened. Wow. Is she gonna keep the photo on her phone? Oh, are you showing cat photos? Oh gosh, I shouldn't do that voice. Ah, oh, Cherry, I got a ton of photos. Bunnies are my favorite. I got like 20 of the little guys. Maybe you should start keeping them in separate cages. Taylor, do you have any pets? Eh, low maintenance ones. Sure, I have a small aquarium at home. Has some loaches, some angelfish. What, wait, what the heck are loaches? Oh gosh, why am I so dumb? Don't have enough time to raise anything else. I came to win after all. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Found them! Uh, oh no. Oh no, indeed. Oh, they're really fuzzy! I know, right? Jerry proceeded to bombard me with body photos for the better part of the half an hour. I think Taylor managed to wriggle free in the ensuring chaos. Oh my gosh. Only when she was satisfied did Cherry finally release me from her grip. It's time to get out of here and find something to do today. Music room, Cherry, Taylor's room, or hang around the lounge. Ooh. I mean, I did say I could go to Taylor's room now uh, later, so I'm glad that, that that's still an option. So let's go to Taylor's room. I opt to head over to Taylor's room for now, because I'm curious to see Taylor's room. Her room's a bit of a walk to get to. It doesn't see a lot of foot traffic, and you kind of have to go out of the way to reach it. Stopping right in front of the door, I overhear some muffled music from the other side. Like, how muffled? Like, <laughs> it sounds so familiar, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I knocked at the door to her room, adding a bit more oomph. Hopefully the music wouldn't drown it out. Door's open. Ah, uh, okay, I guess we're going to go in. Letting myself in, I catch a glimpse at the interior of Taylor's room. Very green. It's pretty organized. With each corner of her shape dedicated to something, there was a yoga mat to the far corner, some exercise equipment. Also, I feel like it's the same style, like the design is like Alice's room as well, but in green. She managed to fit a sofa in here, and that's where she was, sprawled along as if picked at a pile of peeled oranges. She's watching some kind of movie on her TV. Oh, hey, Alice. Didn't expect you. What's up? She turns her head to me with an affirmative nod. I just wanted to see what you were up to. We barely talk. So, you know we're competing against each other, right? I mean, yes, of, right, of course, but we can still do stuff. I just kind of wanted to get to know you a bit better, that's all. Taylor gave me a long look, like she was studying me and downloading my psych. It was a little unnerving. Psyche? What the heck? Was she under undressing me with her eyes? Wait, no, you're only supposed to do that on stage. Oh my gosh, what do you mean by undressing my with eyes? Alright, I can vibe with that. She sat up, patting the spot next to her. Oh my gosh, she's accepting me as one of her own. That's a step! I take a steep seat next to her, getting a better look at the screen. There was some kind of dance off in a dingy, dingy street alley. You remember Hip Hop Streets? They made a bunch of these movies. Vaguely! I remember this song though from Tiffany Lancer. They played it everywhere when I was a kid. Like, how long? How old were you, and how long? Gosh, I wonder what she's up to nowadays. She was a huge star. 
Something about a mental breakdown. She drove her Impala into a fountain and hopped up on antidepressants. Wait, what the heck is an Impala? Oh, is that like the brand of a car? Like, is it a brand of a car or something? Because I don't know what the heck an Impala is. Oh, so much worse. I have to look up later. Oh, oh no. Well, that was awkward. Silence hung in the air. The sick beats of the movie filling the void. Like, dun, dun, dun. I don't know. I don't know the sound of the movie. I should probably say something. Uh, these movies are inspirational. They're really good dancers. Or do you watch a lot of movies? Um, I can, I'm just gonna ask, does Taylor watch a lot of movies? Do you watch a lot of movies, Taylor? If you don't mind me asking. I let them play in the background. They're good background noise for when I'm doing something actually important. Oh, so you kind of like multitask, I guess? I don't know. Like you watch documentaries? They're good for new perspectives. I probably prefer those. These movies aren't based on true stories though, aren't they? Nah, I mean, maybe, who knows? I'm just in it for the choreography. Ah, oh, so you could then, insp like, you know, it's insp inspiration. I learned something new about Taylor, at least. I made an okay impression, I guess. Before long, Taylor and I finished work. Uh, watching the movie. I should get going. Thanks for having me, Taylor. No problem. Don't be a stranger. It was strange. I kind of kept my distance, thinking she was so serious and aloof. But she's nicer than I gave her credit for. Nyeh, <laughs> nyeh. Stirring awake in the middle of the night, I come to a realization. I'm like super thirsty. My throat's all dry too. Same, my throat is drying up like real bad. So, maybe I'll go get a glass of water. Eh, but the dining hall is kind of far just for water. Which sounds a bit silly, don't you think? I'm already awake, and if I try to go back to sleep now, I'll just think about the first. Sleeping into a robe, I get ready for the trek up the stairs. It's actually a little spooky coming out this late at night. Ooh, spooky, creepy ghosts are hiding in the furniture, about to pop up and scare you. I guess there's still security guards mulling about, but it's not much comfort when you're out here alone. Oh yeah, it's scary. Like, the isolation. Well, the dining hall isn't far. I'll just grab a water bottle and head back. Shouldn't be more than five minutes. Yeah, five minutes tops, like, probably a minute or 30 seconds. Alright, made it to the dining hall in one piece. Now to find the vending machines. What? The place has vending machines too? Wait, what? I heard a door closing over in the direction of the kitchen. The doors were still swinging, and the loud click of footsteps followed soon after. They were getting softer, but was someone there? Oh, oh poop. Are we being robbed? Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Run to safety or investigate the noise. I would like to investigate. I'm curious. This was a really, really bad idea, but my curiosity was piqued, and I doubt I'd sleep any better if I ran off. Yeah, try and ease the mind a bit. From underneath the doorframe, I could make out light, moving back and forth eventually. They must have brought a flashlight, then they came prepared. To rob a kitchen? Weird flex, but okay, sure. I opened the door just a smidge to peek inside, hoping to get a better look. To my great surprise, it was someone I knew. Mary? She had a plate out on the counter with a sandwich sack almost a foot tall. It looked like she was packed an entire deli in the thing. Like seriously, how big? I'm, I want to now see it. In like, person. But... Why was Mary up in the middle of the night? Does she have like nightmares or night terrors? It looked really good too. It was in the moment that our eyes met, her hands stopped as she was buttering up one of the slices of rye. Alice? Oh poop. Gotta think fast, gotta think fast. I came here for a purpose. We'll be honest. That looks really good. Can you make me one? What? No, what am I, your personal maid? Uh, no, that's not what I meant. I just, since you're here and all. Get out, get out. Oh, okay, just let me get my water. I hurry over to the fridge, reaching for a few bottles. This is a premium stuff they bottle in Switzerland. Like, whoa, how expensive. Would you stop gawking and just get out? Oh, is she like stress eating or something? Fine, fine, not like we're supposed to be in here anyway. Under considerable duress, I make a point of getting out of there as quickly as possible. Ooh! Ooh, this is different. Today the prep room is nice. Another week already. I don't know if I am ready. Oh my goodness, her outfit. And Mary's outfit! You'll need to learn to overcome. I guess I'm not as strong-willed as you, Mary. I just don't like this feeling of my friends leaving me one by one. That and I don't really feel worthy of advancing. Your earlier concern I can understand, but your second concern is unforgivable. But say, that you aren't worthy. Are you trying to tell me that a contestant who'll be eliminated isn't worthy either? That's not what I meant. I'm saying that they should be here and not me. I mean, if the professional judges' votes counts more than the lay audience, I'm sure I'll be the first to go. But are singers always judged in the kind of strict manner you're suggesting? No, but... You know... 
Even if we don't consider the fact that this isn't even true, being an idol isn't just about showing off your singing technique. It's a multi-faceted form of entertainment. The audience would take to your looks, take to your fashion style, whatever. But that's just how it is. Wow, only the looks in the outfit. But don't you think that's unfair? Unfair in what way? You're asking this question like asking whether it'd be unfair for an artist to not be born a scientist instead. Wow. We're all unique individuals here, with different strengths and weaknesses. It's up to you to make your strengths shine and defeat your weaknesses. That's, an, that's good, that's important advice. Even if that means winning an idol contest by being cute. If that's your strength, then yes, be the cutest you can be. Develop and maintain a stage personality. That, it just feels so shallow. Wow. Wow, Alice. I don't think so. See, Jacques and I have a deep respect for him. Shallow as a character he is. He spends literally hours on his makeup. He even adopted a French stage name just to enhance his, his stage personality. <laughs> you think it's easy? I think not. He put a lot of hard work into it. All for the sake of entertaining his audience. That's what an idol should be like. Oh, so is so Jacques is like his stage name or is that? I think it's just his stage name. I'm curious if about his real name now. You may feel like crying on the inside from all the stress upon your shoulders, but under the bright lights, you keep it all in, showing only the smile that your audience wants to see. Is that not just being fake? It's all about giving the audience something to dream about when they are watching you. They can forget about the harsh realities they face on a regular basis. Oh, okay. You're creating a temporary utopia for them. This is where they can just let go and have fun. Um, I, I don't know if I really get it. You do. You've been doing this super... Super Billy so far, you may be like this, but on stage you really shy. Wait, Super Billy? I hope I pronounced that right. I suppose like this, it isn't exactly a good thing, right? Right? Hmm, it's not idol-like for sure, but it's adorable in its own way. Before I get the chance to ask further, Taylor comes out of the change room with a green knitted hat on her head. Mary squints at her. Oh my goodness, just... What? Really? That's all for your outfit? The theme is winter. And you're wearing the t-shirt! The same t-shirt as the intro episode in week one! Oh, I've, it's different from last week's. This one is the one whom you should learn from if you want to become an idol, Alice. I'm surprised your lack of style hasn't gotten you eliminated yet on Virtue alone. Yeah, I'm surprised as well that you're, just, like, Taylor's not committing. If elimination means I could just leave this place, I have sung like I was on helium to get the heavens out of here. Wow, Taylor, wow. I wonder why Taylor seems so reluctant to participate in all this. I mean, she did sign up for this on her own accord, right? I'm not going to ponder why you even applied in the first place, but even now, we signed a contract. I would have to pay for damages to that greedy Russian lady if I were to withdraw now. I'm pretty sure she's Solvel Solvanian, actually. Presganka and all. I looked it up online after she mentioned it. Solvanian. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Stop, you two. We're going off topic. I don't see what else I need to say. I'm not rich like you, Mary. I can't fish out a couple hundred thousand from my pockets. With that, Taylor just turns around and heads for the stage, leaving all of us staring after her. What did you guys just say to her to have her stomp out like that? <gasps> Jerry's outfit's so cute! <sighs> Nothing. She's just being her usual unprofessional self is all. I wouldn't go that far. I, I just want everybody to get along. Welcome back to Supernova. This is the third week of our contest where we only the best can remain and step up to the throne for your next super idol. As you can see here, this week's theme is winter. Our first contestant to sing for us today is Raisa Cherenkov. Welcome. Oh, that's a little different. I thought it would be okay. Mary. Yeah, Miss Dominica decided I should do the opener for this week. It's okay. I'll be fine. Images of snow d drift down to fall on virtue confused. Confidence within a global eliminated on the screen. Cherry walks up onto the stage, standing beside where a snowman decoration is placed. Conifers, I've got the word. Her pale skin and platinum hair blends into the background eyes, a piercing blue like cris ice crystals. Still, despite the fragile appearance, Cherry gives off a strength that I've never seen from her before. Huh. The song opens with lovely piano notes. Then, as what sounds like sleigh bells started ringing, Cherry's voice joins in. Like, high and jolly. Like a sugar plum fairy voice. It's a whispery sad tone like withered branches struggling to withstand the cold. But as smooth synth strings start filling in the shadows, Cherry's voice thickens, rich. I thought she only sings children's songs, but now she's so in command of this song this week. Cherry closes her eyes. I can see, I can hear that she has completely submerged herself into the melody. There's probably nothing else on her mind now. Just the lyrics of the song. The words she's singing for one person and one person only. And who is that? I'm not so small now, you see. Won't you come and stay with me? 
I can take you to the sky. I was a small bird, but now can fly. I am strong now, you know. I can hold you. I won't let go. So long as you're here, I have no fear. Oh, are they just singing this and I'm just narrating it? She steps up, her white boots leaving barely any sounds on the ground. It's like she really knows how to fly, her voice rising with the wind. She lifts her hand upwards, the blue sleeve of her coat drawing a beautiful arch to the side, reaching out. Not a summer and a scorching sun, not winter and freezing snow. So long as you're here, I won't let go, won't let go. I clap along with the crowd. The sound we make starts off gently, then becomes deafening. I think I can see it now. Why Cherry's singing is always so charming. It's genuine. Like, how genuine? Even though I may not share the same feelings as she is expressing, I become engrossed in understanding them. Engrossed? What the heck does that mean? When I'm watching her on the stage, it's as though I've stepped into her shoes, walking the path she has taken, experiencing the emotions, feeling her heart. They are simple emotions, but they are clear. Cherry doesn't hide herself. This is who she is, the good and bad, the strong and weak. It's a powerful way to sing. There is no performance quite like it. Thank you, Risa. That was a heartfelt song indeed. Yeah, I, I, I would tell if I actually listened to it. Our next contestant is Mary Viswanatham. So far, she has displayed a warm image for us on the stage. How will she fare with this week's winter theme? Mary, who along with Taylor has been silent throughout Cherry's performance, gets up to walk to onto the stage. The silver and diamond jewellery makes a strong contrast on her son's kissed skin, giving her an even more noble look than usual. She's like the queen of snow. But this just makes her slightly trembling hands. See, um, you okay? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't I be? I want to assure her that it's okay to be nervous, but how can I do it? Maybe pointing out her current state would only worsen things. I take her hands in mine and give them an affirming squeeze instead. I... it was a shock listening to Cherry sing like that. I almost doubted myself. But I guess after all she's her, I'm me. I'll have to do things my way. Well that's okay, Mary. I'll root for you no matter what style you choose for your performance. Thanks. Harps sound in the background, strings plucked one by one. They form a beautiful melody, but it's thin and sparse, like something is lacking. Mary's voice fills the gaps, humming, crying. Her voice, deep, colorful, paints the night sky with the moon and stars. The calm light unveils snowflakes that have been dancing in the frigid air all along, falling upon our shoulders to dust a soft layer of white. That's the imagery Mary brings forth. It's serene, it's breathtaking, but only then do I realize that she's always sound detached from the crowd, from the world, from me, from herself, even. It's unreal! Her warmth in the summer theme, her energy in the nursery rhyme, and now her delicate cold in this winter theme, so well constructed, yet I somewhat want to hear what the real Mary would sound like. I've always just noticed her perfection, the lady with a good upbringing, smart and beautiful, albeit a little self-concentered, but who is she, really? What are her motivations? What are her true feelings now? What is her true identity? I wonder if Mary was not standing on a stage, but just by a bus stop, waiting as snow falls on her umbrella. What kind of tune will she let slip from her lips? From her parted lips? <laughs> but that is just a pointless musing. Perhaps this is the real Mary. Of course she's not truly perfect, but, she, but she's a person who tries very hard to be so. She may be nervous this moment, she may be lost, but to give the audience a dream to experience? In her own way, Mary may be a gentle person after all. A most beautiful performance from Mary Viswan Nathan. Once again, she's saying the snow falling under moonlight calm and entrancing. It's a shame you still haven't opened up your heart, Mary. Such a beautiful voice, only come to waste. You are the one to say, if you don't get serious soon, you'll be eliminated. I don't know if I care. Taylor doesn't let the tense atmosphere get to her. The moment she's on stage, she's the cool, collected singer again. The broad theme opens in the background, her voice easily blending into it along with the hell-like bent rings of a second melody. Taylor doesn't force too much air into her singing, but somehow she manages to project the clear sounds into the audience. It's like she it doesn't take any effort, but at the same time, I know it's just the show of her skills. I know Taylor is very skillful from day one. However, that skill never actually translates to enhancing the mood of the song that she sings. Instead, she warps every song into something of her own, feeding it with hopeless melancholy. Melancholy. Yeah, there we go. She does the same with this wintry music. What originally sounds like an innocent walk down a snow-lined sidewalk becomes a walk down memory lane. I can almost feel my hand numb from cold, from the cold, taken in her and led down a path where her steps leave the snow dented. I follow her into the dark, reliving vague regrets threatening to shallow our mere presence. Summer, winter, all just minor twists to her bleak mentality. Thank you, Taylor. You have expressed the deslo desolate face of winter in your song. That was a unique take. 
a dead low eight. It's a soul eight. I think that's it. Now our last contestant, Alice Carroll, will take her to onto her theme. Alice, the stage is now yours. Oh, we'll have her take on the theme. Wow. <gasps> I feel like I'm slowly losing my English to this game. Indeed. What is it that I want to express? What is it that I want to sing? The sun has hidden. The skies are gray. I can feel the chill coming, but I'll brace through it all. I can still hear your voice whispering through the wind. The cold air reminds me, even if we don't meet again. When the snow falls, my heart will skip again. I will remember all of our days again. Those memories will be on with me. Should I be like Cherry? Sing for a person who means a lot to her? Hmm, I don't know. Probably. Or be like Mary, sing for the crowd that watches her. Maybe yet, I will sing like Taylor, minding only my own feelings, venting them to my heart's content. Oh, to sing like Taylor. Oh, wow, I'm a derp. Only when I step up to the stage do I come to discover that I have never even contemplated this question. How should I sing? For what reason do I sing? Who am I singing to? In the first two weeks, I have just been shocked. The moment I stood here, I didn't know what to do. I just did what I could, trying not to screw up. Maybe my skill was too low. I had too much going around in my head, just trying to keep up with the beat to reach every note. But now I'm getting better. I know I can now command my voice. I have control over the pitch and timbre, the amplitude and texture. I've learned a lot from the others. I developed an arsenal of techniques I can use, maybe even to improvise variations to the melody. When the piano melody sounds, I wonder how to start. This is important. I'll be setting the mood for the rest of the song. But I'm lost. I still don't know how. When the snow falls, my heart will skip again. I will remember all our days again. Those memories will be with me till I'm old. It's strange, because the more I ponder, the harder it becomes. When I just let go, the song takes me exactly where I should be. Maybe it's a sad thing not having a style that's mine. I don't have anything in particular that I want to express, you know. I really wish I could lead my audience just like Cherry, Mary, and Taylor. But maybe being led by the song itself isn't so bad. The melody takes me deep into someone's reminisce. Young days, going to parties, having fun. There are so few constraints to limit her. Like a caterpillar building its cocoon, everything seems possible. But once locked inside, fear churns. What if she can't become anything? What if she's always remained an ugly worm while everybody else becomes bright butterflies and take flight into the wide skies above? Those are the dark nights and cold winters. Metaphorical, yes, but so real in her mind. Then someone takes her hand. She can't see, but she can feel the warmth holding her. She's being dragged out into the light. She can feel her new wings flutter off remnants of her old coat and broke, brought into their full whatever the last thing said because I accidentally skipped ahead. She is now engulfed in sunlight. It is no longer cold. It is spring. The scent of flowers fill her nostrils. By instinct, she flaps those wings. Oh, that's beautiful. By instinct, she flaps those wings. Winter leaves, winter comes again. All that's left are memories. The person who saved her is gone, but she'll still remember. Somewhere in the snow remains her savior's footsteps. Knowing this alone gives her comfort. She too has flown away. I too fly away. So poetic, I blink. The snow is gone, no caterpillars, no cocoon, no butterflies. They were all my imagination, built from the melody of the song. The words that form the lyrics. I didn't have a self when I was singing. I became the protagonist. The story becomes mine. Who is the audience? I don't know. The ones in the seats? Behind the TV? My boss? Friends? Family? Even myself? So many questions. And I don't think it matters in the end. To me, singing is singing. It's fun, using my voice to bring meaning to notes and words that aren't my own. By singing, I connect with the thoughts of others. I feel what I cannot under normal circumstances. And it is that not the purpose of art, to communicate feelings that are difficult to express, even to people who may not share your experiences, culture, or even language. It's something that transcends all boundaries of society. It is an art that helps us emphasize with each other, brings harmony despite our differences. Knowing this gives me purpose to continue. I can't help but smile at the audience, who finally claps after my performance has ended. Another nice performance by Alice Carroll. I'm sure we can all relate a little to the themes expressed in this song, but with four wonderful performances from our contestants, it'll be a difficult choice to eliminate one of them. Let's decide during the commercial break. Stay tuned, we will be back with the results. Oh, we'll be back with the results! You're actually smiling, kid. My boss waits for me at the doorway at the, to the prep room, making me nearly jump in surprise like, oh my gosh! I suppose I'm actually happy with my performance. Well, it really isn't that bad. And here I was feeling good about myself. Her cold statement doesn't give me much hope, huh? Pretty much. Were you perhaps expecting me to praise you? Um, maybe, but I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Ha ha ha. 
I noticed that even my boss's harsh comments aren't doing much to sway my mood. I know I did well. It isn't something that needs to be verified by others. Remember then your performance? I think your mindset is even more worthy of praising. Mindset? In my opinion, an idol is a marketed phenomenon. An idol can be ugly, can lack talent, but so long as you promote her to a divine status, she'll be loved. The only thing is, she first has to believe this to be possible. You mean, no matter how poor your abilities are, objectively speaking, to still believe you are the best of the best? Question mark? Something like that. A person with the belief that they are omnipotent can become a god. A god who doesn't believe themselves to be omnipotent. On the other hand, will cease to be re revered. That's philosophical. When you get to my age, you'll start having some theories about life. I don't know if I appreciate that kind of philosophy, but regardless, I'll try harder. Yes. Succeed! I want to be loved by the audience because of my ability to engage them, not because of some artificial promotion designed to specifically target the crowd's cycle or whatever. After my conversation with boss, I joined the others in the prep room to wait for the results. Mary and Taylor are still staying quiet from their previous conflict while Cherry is making some idle chatter with the stage director. So, um, everybody did well in the performances just now. I don't know about that. I think I could have done better. Strange to say, but I'm in agreement regarding my own performance. You don't have to say that about yourselves. I'm sure we all have had a tough time deciding who will advance, who will be eliminated this week. The results now lie in my hands, and I must say, they are very close. They are close, very close, very, very close. The winner of this week is Raisa Cherenkov. Our professional judges and the lay audience on our comment boards both comment on the strong, genuine emotions you expressed in your heartfelt ballad. Congratulations, Raisa. You've advanced. Coming in second place is... Well, this is a little unexpected. Well, who? This just goes on to prove how much she has improved. Congratulations, Ar Alice Carroll. You have also advanced. The simple take on a highly relatable song has res resonated strongly with our audience. Oh, second place? I'll take that. I'm okay with taking second place. Wait, who's gonna- it's between Taylor and Mary. Over the weeks, you developed a unique charm, making you now a forerunner for victory rather than the underdog from when we first started. Great job, Alice. But that means it's either Mary or Taylor that's gonna get booted. I mean, it would be kind of funny if Taylor gets booted because of the lack of the outfit. I mean, I don't think I heard him right. I actually made it to second place? I don't know how to feel about this. I'll take second. I'm fine with second place. Be proud, Alice. You deserve it. I- I don't know about that. Mary is actually right this time. I can feel the confidence in you. You don't need to hide it. Do we look like the type of people to be upset by being jealous? Uh, of course not. Then all you have to say is, thank you for your support. I'll continue to work hard. I thank you for your support. I'll continue. I'll get better. I'll work very hard in the future. Taylor puts her large hand on my head and ruffles my hair, giving me a rare smile I hardly know she's capable of showing. Good. I look forward to seeing your improvement. And today, the two facing elimination are Taylor Warren and Mary Vis Van Atham. Please come onto the stage, Taylor and Mary. How do you feel about standing here today? Do I really have to answer this question? Taylor may not be speaking to the mic, but I can still tell that's exactly what she's saying. After all, that fits her personality perfectly. Mary delivers her a glare and takes the mic into her own hands instead. I thank everybody to the for the chance to be here. It's what I w should say. I guess at this point, I have revisited my strategy of acting like the idol I have thought people like to see. In all honesty, I've always felt confident about winning. I know I'm skillful, and there shouldn't be anything stopping me. What I haven't considered is the true meaning of being here. What are my own feelings about the words I sing? What are the feelings that the songwriters are trying to express? I think maybe those are the, also the things I should have considered. If I were to have the chance to return to the stage, that's what I would like to answer. I know this sounds idealistic and practical, but that's what I really think at this moment. Considering how Mary is, I can only imagine how much it took for her to say all of this. She has always valued professionalism above all else. I'm sure at this moment, she probably feels selfish to be using the opportunity to express her thoughts. Still, she has gathered the courage to say it. She has gathered the courage to revisit her own ideas of what being an idol should be. This truthful side of her can only be described as admirable. I want to become an idol, not just cut out for the same mold as all the others. I want to bring something new to the industry. This may be arrogant of me, but I think there would be no reason for me to become an idol if I have nothing new to offer.
Facing elimination made me realize this. For that alone, I'm glad you guys have given me a wake-up call. I would have had no regrets even if I were the one to step down from the stage today. She has a be beautiful speech, beautiful speech. And, like, one, like this video if this speech is making you feel emotional and deep inside. Thank you, Mary. That was very motivational. Do you have anything to add, Taylor? No, that was perfect. Taylor looks over to Mary, offering Mary her hand. Mary widens her eyes, but takes it in her grasp. One of us will have to go, but the memories is something that'll stay. Agreed. All right, now I must announce who will be eliminated from week two of Supernova. I'm sorry to say... Who's getting booted? Who's getting booted? Who's getting booted? Oh, the suspense. The suspense. Hurry up, just announce it. What? Mary, this one up and you have been eliminated? What? Wait, what? Wait, what, 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 no! Are you kidding me? Why Mary? Mary doesn't look too upset. She calmly steps down the stage. Really, she's like a queen. She may have lost, but she is not lost. If anything, she knows what she wants even better now. I wish I could be like that. If no, when Mary becomes an idol in the future, she'll be an inspiration for many. And then it was down to three. After the show last night, it still doesn't really feel real. It's just the three of us, Cherry, Taylor, and myself at breakfast together. Huh? It's so much quieter here without Mary around. Ah, uh, Cherry, don't take it so hard. Somebody needed to get eliminated. It's so final though, like we're going to be torn apart from each other. Yeah, that's kind of the point of an elimination competition. Last one standing wins. Taylor, you could be a bit more sympathetic. Yeah, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sympathetic? Synthetic? <laughs> no, sympathetic. I, that has to be the right. I hope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I pronounced it right. Why? It's how the business goes. She doesn't make the cut, so we all move on. I don't know why y'all are so turn, torn up about it. It's not like she upped and died. <laughs> I like how you're saying y'all. Like y'all. You sound like a. Are you a southerner? I mean, I don't want to sound mean here, but you. I love when you say y'all. Why? I don't want her to die. Oh, Cherry, my girl. Uh, my. Innocent little bunny. Yeesh, the sight of Cherry, it reminds me of a puppy crying for its owner. L look, on the bright side, they'll probably invite us all for some kind of a reunion dinner or something. Yeah, probably at some cheap dive though. Producer's stingy as heck. That sounds nice. Also, there's probably going to be cameos for future seasons in store for us. Wow, I didn't even think of that. That makes me feel like I'm part of the show family or something. Y'all think we shouldn't take a picture together? We can use it for a Christmas card. Oh, that is lovely. Christmas card, that's nice. You know what? Sure, why not? Let's just track down Mary and we'll get it done. There's probably a costume department around here somewhere too if we really wanted to accessorize. Can we dress up as Santa's reindeer? Ooh, I want to be Cupid. Cupid, I want to be Cupid. Why did I say Cupid? <laughs> wow, what is wrong with me? Oh my goodness, just so much has happened right now in this episode. Like, everything just escalated quickly. I, I don't know if if they have that sort of thing. I wonder what Mary was up to. Last night must have been rougher for her than she's been letting on. I got another big day ahead. Maybe I'll find time to check up on her. Still though, I gotta get time to practice on my own routine. Or they might cut me next. Okay, go to the dining room or go see Mary. I probably should go check up on Mary. I mean, she just got booted. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to check up on her. Don't you think? I think I'll see what Mary's up to. I haven't seen a lot of her since she got eliminated. I mean, she just got eliminated. Like, but, whew, that was a stressful show. Things are really coming down to the wire now. I wonder what Mary's gonna do now. She doesn't come to group practices anymore. Sometimes I see her rehearsing by herself, but are we all just supposed to move forward? These questions all ring in the back of my head as I stand in front of Mary's room. I knock at her door, hoping for a response. Quietly, I listen closely inside. I could hear her voice. She was murmuring to someone. So she is in there. I knock again with a little more oomph. Can you sit still for one second? I'm on the phone. Uh... I made out an exasperated sigh from the other side of the door. Oh, it's I. <sighs> Well, Mary seemed to be, well, pretty much the same as usual. That was oddly relieving. And I already announced my presence, so all I could do was awkwardly stand there until Mary summons me. Thankfully, it wasn't long until the door swung open. Come in. With that low-spoken invitation, I let myself in. Sorry for making you wait. I was on the phone with my agent. Hi, Mary. Um, how are you feeling? What does that mean? Don't tell me you came over for pity. Well, since you got eliminated, we don't really see you a lot. So I wondered, you wondered what? That I'd be sitting here all in here all day crying my eyes out? <laughs> Please, you gotta give me a little bit of credit here. Th that's not what I meant. I, I wanted to see you again, that's all. 
Heh, <laughs> so sentimental. She scoffed, folding her arms. I feel like she was judging me. Don't worry, your pretty little head. The producer's keeping me around to talk to the fans. And my agent's already lined me up with a deal to produce a solo album. I say I'm in good shape. Oh, that's so great. Let me know when it drops so I can buy, like, 10 copies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Only 10? You wound me, Alice. What? You wound me? What the heck does that even mean? We share a laugh. Mary seemed to be in high spirits. Ah, you're gonna be an idol after all. Well, I wasn't about to go back and live on Daddy's credit cards all over again. And it's not like life is just over when you lose. You just go and do something else. Yeah. I mean, I'm famous now, and I got fans, so I figure I made it out, okay? Yeah, you're right. Honestly, I was really worried about what would happen if I lost. I don't really have a plan, you know. So... You need an agent. I could get you in with my guy. She's fantastic. Absolutely cutthroat. Uh, cutthroat? How? She's a master at power plays. Like, like making sure you only get the blue M&Ms or so help them. What, seriously? Is that one of your requests? Me? No, I'm not crazy. They're all the same. Right. Mary and I hu Mary and I hung out for a few hours. Wow, why did I pause there? Oh, goodness, I was taking time to read the whole thing before. Oh, gosh. After dinner and relaxing at the lounge for a bit, I returned to my room to sleep. It has been a long day. It feels good to be back here, resting on the soft bed. I pull the covers up to my shoulders and move into a comfortable position. The sheets smell of fresh lemony detergent, matching the residue of minty mouthwash between my teeth. I close my eyes, ready to be further refreshed by slumber. I awake to the first light of day streaming through my curtains. My alarm has yet to sound. I turn it off, feeling rested, enough that I don't need to sleep in any longer. The air smells fresh. I take a deep breath in, letting the oxygen fill every cell in my body. It's a new day, and with it, a new adventure awaits. Just thinking about all that has happened is making me excited. Yeah, I'm nervous, but I think I'm happy. Let's try hard today, too. Good morning. Did you sleep well? Good morning, Cherry. I did. How was breakfast? That's good to hear. You'll feel even better after you filled your stomach. The piggy sausages are delicious. Piggy sausages? What? I guess I'll go for the pork sausages with hash browns this morning too. Those would go well with a fresh fruit salad and Greek yogurt to round it all up. Gosh, with an appetite like this, I'm gonna get real fat in no time. Wow, it sounds like you never even eat anything. Not that I mind a little extra weight, my mom keeps saying I'm not eating enough. After lunch, I head back to my room for a bit. Where should I go now? Dining room, hang around the lounge, or go to Taylor's room. I haven't really hung around the lounge yet, so let's go there. I mean, I already got, went into the dining room, so yeah. The atmosphere of the lounge seems like exactly what I need. Oh my goodness, that looks so cool. The art style, I mean. But I feel like the fireplace wall is is naked, I feel like it should have a decoration. That's my personal opinion. As I step into the room, I see Jacques staring out in the window holding a cup of coffee. Morning Jacques, um, bon matin, or where did you get that coffee? Um, how about I just say, probably just, um, just be friendly and say morning Jacques. Um, Jacques turns towards me. Good morning, Alice, and what a lovely morning it is. Well, the weather does seem pretty nice out, but I still think I'll be staying inside for a while. Looking after your skin or just taking a little rest? I don't want to get sunburned, I'm conserving my energy, or inside is where the food is. I don't know, um, probably conserving my energy? Mmm, pass mal? What the heck is pass mal? It makes sense that you want to save your energy for the biggest contest non. But at the same time, it can also be a good idea to spread your wings and try something new. I believe Taylor, for example, has been going on morning jogs to keep herself active. Miss Mary has been taking the occasional shopping trip to sharpen her sense of style. And of course, Mabel Cherry has been... Uh, actually, I think she's mostly spending time with the animals and sort of mendering around the grounds. Perhaps you need to find yourself your own little hobby just for when you don't feel like practicing. Hmm, he's got a point. Anyways, how are you doing this morning? Well, to be honest, I'm still a bit overwhelmed by this whole thing. The contest, you mean? Yeah, some days I still can't believe that I'm a finalist on Supernova. Well, sometimes show business can feel like a fairy tale. The lowly wallflower intern who's miraculously given a chance to shine. It's almost like Cinderella, none. At least he didn't say, Alice in Wonderland. Hey, because <laughs> her name's Alice. But you do seem a little out of the sorts. If you like, I could stand to sit and chat. It might be nice to sit and talk for a while. Actually, I'm inspired to go outside for some reason. No, let's have a conversation with him. Let's actually have a conversation with him. 
Like, you know, because we only talk to him while well, on the stage and off the stage. Not really much off the stage. So what exactly has been on your mind? Um, mm, hmm. I've been thinking about Cherry or I just don't get Taylor. Um, what? I, I don't know who to pick. Maybe Taylor? It's Taylor. I just don't understand her. She's so serious about this, more than any of us. And it's really impressive, but at the same time, I'm kind of worried about her. Are you sure you're not just jealous? What? What do you mean? Well, let me ask you something else. Have you ever had a dream? Something you wanted to do more than anything? Anything in the world? I, uh... I've wanted to be famous my whole life. My dreams were pretty boring. Or Actually, I don't remember. I think she mentioned this in her, like, dialogue that I think she decided that she wanted to be famous. I don't know, but we're gonna go with that su suggestion. I take a deep breath. My mouth goes dry for a moment as I try to find the words. How can I say this without coming off as some stuck-up prima donna? I guess I'll just have to say it. My dream is to sing. On the show, on the show like this, I shake my head. Not just on a show, but everywhere. I want to sing at small crowded bars. I want to sing at grand concert halls. I want to star in a music videos and travel to exotic places. I want to be a star. And yet you never studied music at your school? I studied a bit, thank you very much. But the music program there is really competitive and I didn't want to get my hopes up. So I just, so you kind of did something low-key. Okay, hmm. It seems like you and Taylor have the same dream. Wait, what? Except that she has spent every waking moment fighting to achieve that dream. Whereas I wasn't really doing much. <laughs> Hearing those weird feels like a bucket of cold water being thrown in my face. Thinking back, every time I've seen Taylor, she's been doing something to help herself improve. She really is in a whole other league. I don't deserve to be competing with her, do I? Shark chuckles. Life isn't about deserving things. Alice is about put. It's Alice. It's about putting on a show. Oh my gosh. Still, I hope that helps you realize just why our deal, Taylor. Our dear Taylor is uh, burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, I think I understand. You know, I never realized just how impressive she really is. Would you like me to let you in on one last little secret? Uh, sure. Might be a good helpful tip in the near future. You know what? This could be good. What's the secret? I'm glad you asked. He takes a deep breath, almost like he's about to give a speech. While he's psyching himself up, or is he trying to psych me up, I grab a small pastry that's sitting on a table near the window. Oh, hey, a croissant! I take a small bite. It tastes French. Believe it or not, my dream wasn't always obvious to me. I didn't always want to be an entertainer. Wait, what? Shock? I can't imagine him as anything but a sparkly, melodramatic TV host. It's true. I wanted to be a writer. You are a writer? That's actually impressive. Journalism? Or just a sto like someone who just likes to write a story? That was not the reveal I was expecting. Are you serious? He nods. That's right. I used to want to love to write love stories. Oh, he wants to write romance uh, novels. But what the heck was the first thing he said? Epic, beautiful love stories about young, passionate lovers in revolutionary France. Uh, cool. That sounds nice. It was very good. Cool. But then one day, I realized something. I'd much rather be on the stage than behind the scenes. I didn't have to just write about glamour and glitz. I could have lived a life of romance. That is so incredibly cheesy. So your Bellevance industry pro tip of the morning is this. Go, sing, live a life of love and luxury. Can I finish my croissant first? You may. Great! And with that, I decided to head somewhere else, nibbling on my breakfast snack as I walk. I never thought anyone could sing so much in one day. After listening to Cherry and Taylor practice at the same time for hours on end, I feel like I could just collapse. Between their lovely tones and the soft background music, I'm surprised I wasn't lulled to, to sleep back there. But my bed looks so comfy. Just a little rest before tomorrow will be good. If the prep room was quiet last week, then it's silent this week. Oh my gosh, Alice's outfit, and she has her hair out. Yas, queen! You really need to let your hair down more often. Auntie sure looks sad today. Has your friend ditched you? I'm not sad. I'm just thinking. Thinking about what to do now that your friend is not here to help? I would like to rebuke him, but maybe there is some truth to what he is saying. Even if Mary hasn't been directly guiding me, st she still has given me a motivation and inspiration. It's strangely depressing with her gone. 
I think it's a good thing. Oh, whoa, Taylor has changed the shirt. Easier for you to win? Oh, please, do I look like I care about that? You know Mary is trying to get Alice and I to become more independent, but... But what? It's hard, right? I really only joined because I thought I could watch this show. Oh my goodness, Cherry looks so cute. Like her dress and I and Alice looks like she's going to a hip-hop thing. Well, in tea, I roll my eyes in response. Yeah, that's right. So please don't give me an excuse to bail out of this right before the show starts. As though you can afford to lose your job and pay for the damages. Who's n who knows? I have a rich friend after all. Maybe she lend me money. Taylor chuckles, clearly amused by how I turn the director's words back at him. I guess that really leaves me no choice but to win this and make sure I don't have to go back to being an intern. It isn't that I don't want to become more self-reliant, but it's easier said than done, huh? Maybe it's the process that matters. The process. Duh. Process? You should know all about this, Alice. We've all seen your growth throughout the past few weeks. I admit I have a bit more confidence in my abilities now, but I really have no systematic way of ensuring my own improvement. I don't know if I just stall one day and find that I cannot go further even though I have yet to climb to the top. It's like how my mom says it'd be impossible for me to cook no matter how much I try. No, you just have to take the eggs out of the carton and crack the shell before it's fried. How can one think that tossing the entire carton of eggs, cardboard and all, onto the pan and assume it be miraculously cook into anything editable is beyond me. Lucky thing was, Cherry didn't even remember or know how to turn on the stove. Thank goodness. The show's about to start. Ready to head over, guys. What can I say? I never feel ready anyway. Yes, boss. Welcome to week three of Supernova. With only three contestants left, today we will decide who gets the ticket to the grand final. Who will be left behind? Are you ready for the cruel battle to come? Of course you are. We've all been waiting for this day since the very beginning. It's only right that we have a su suitable theme to set the stage. Presenting to you the theme of this week. What is the theme? I'm curious. Darkness. Yes, darkness will be the theme of this week. How will our contestants portray it with their voices? Let us lend our applause to our first contestant to take on the challenge, Raisa Cherenkov. A lonely, depressing melody sounds as Cherry takes to the stage, her dark, layered dress dragging behind her. She sings as her heels click down the stage, her voice thin, airy, like an eerie fog dawn across a rural night. Her skin, so white as it's though bl blood doesn't run beneath it, and eyes are deep blue, Cherry gives off the impression of an ice witch from folklore, immortalized as a marble figurine dwelling on an old music box. With each repetition of the main theme, this illusion becomes more like reality. This is the power of Cherry's singing. With each repetition of the main theme, this illusion becomes more like reality. This is the power of Cherry's singing. She possesses a unique timber and vo vo wide vocal range, giving her much needed flexibility by expressing whatever emotions she desires. Wow, I, this game is gonna make me lose my English at the end of this. I wonder how close we are to the end. She could turn the simplest of melodies to something different and outstanding. It's like she is some kind of god, shaping the world with mud and giving it life with her breath. But it's like something is lacking today. Motivation. Sorry. More like inspiration, Taylor. Ah, I can relate to that. I can't. If anything, if that's always been your strong point, Alice, you may not realize it, but inspiration just flows within you, overflows, really. That's how we can all sense it. Thank you, Raisa. Next we have Alice Carroll. Just listen to this opening should be enough to tell us she's going to put a different spin to this week's theme, right? All right, Alice, I'll leave things into your hands. I don't know if what Taylor said really applies to me. I don't have time to think of it either. But the music is on. The game's mine. I head onto the stage, a grin filling my face. At least I'm not lost this time. His eyes are closed, the wind is racing, his heart beats fast, all of it's in the past. Keep running, keep running, keep running till the end, till the end. He'll reach his goal, he'll never stop. When the lights turn on, he'll be there. While Cherry took a more traditional ghost story-like approach to the dark theme, I'm spinning it with a modern take at back feud fuge in G minor. Is that how I say it? Fuge? Box fuge? I am sorry if I'm mispronouncing things. The song takes off with a strong, pounding rhythm, the pedal point only emphasizing this beat. I move my body with a hard hit of each note, making my voice pulse with it. The lights are flashing along with my lead, swerving, blinking, changing in rapid succession of vivid array of colors. Darn it, director, you may be a butt, but you do make sure the crowd does its job, right? Huh? 
I can't portray all of your efforts, I swear. I mold myself into a gothic ballerina, dancing like my limbs are rigged with death. I imagine things growing long within my mouth, and in showing them the quality of my voice changes to that of a croak, a growl. My sound deepens, roughens, I'm infected with a virus that makes me into a zombie. I am Dracula and Frankenstein. <laughs> what? Like a hybrid? As I reach my black paint and nails to the audience, I brush across webs that cling to me like a glove. The spider, a black widow, scurrying up my arm to perch proudly on my shoulder. Yes. That's the imagery I'm going for. Is this the inspiration Taylor was taking, uh, talking about? I don't know. Maybe I have been so dissatisfied with my life up to this point that I've gotten used to filling the hollows with my imagination. That's a morbid thought. But even if that were the case, I'm starting to figure out a solution to my dissatisfaction. When I think I can't do something, tell myself I can. I can! When I can't see an opportunity, go find it. Standing here on the stage makes me remember all the dreams I've tossed out because of my old co cowardice. I thought it, I was just being realistic when I gave up on pursuing them. In the end, I was just hiding from the possibility of failure. Who cares if I fail, really? Myself? So if I can forgive myself in the case, I fail. Nobody else would have a problem with it, right? What is there to fear then? If we really think about it, fear is often a constructed quality, a figment of our own thoughts and illusions. That's why even darkness, no matter how seemingly fearsome at first glance, can be turned on its head to something interesting, amazing, flavorful. The pedal point pulls the distance back to the tonal center. The tension is resolving to constant harmony. I pull my hand back, dissolving the imagery of cobwebs, imaginary cobwebs, holding the new energy to my chest as my body loses rigidity, moving into an easy, lively dance. Despite the black teardrops painted beneath my eyes, I'm smiling. I take my voice to a bright climax, giving it all my radiance. The waves of glow sticks beneath the stage follow my lead. We're breaking through the night, bringing in a new dawn. It's a celebration. Beautiful, beautiful work from Alice Carroll. A big hand for her, please. I leave the stage with heart pounding, breath shaking. I have never been so tired, but at the same time, I've never been so satisfied with my work. I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. That was great, Alice. Really great. Really, really great indeed. Finally tossing aside your fake modesty. Do you really have to say it like that? The director gives a chiding snort. I like it better when people like you just say exactly what you're really thinking, so you won't feel left out of being a rude butt. You're the one to speak. Now please lend your warm applause to our final contestant for this evening, Taylor Warren. I don't have time to argue with you anymore. It's my turn. Alice, just want to give you the give you my thanks. I don't didn't really care for this contest at first, hated it even, but now I want to actually try to participate. Then why'd you sign up then? I feel inspired just listening to you. Aww. Taylor still hasn't changed much. Clearly. Oh my goodness. Walt, Sherry, and I both went with the clothes chosen by our production staff. She just puts on a simple gray t-shirt to match her pants. I wasn't under the impression that she would be taking this seriously. But the breath she takes to compose herself in front of her audience makes me aware of how wrong I was. Just the way she's carrying herself is telling me that she's going to offer a real, amazing performance this time. The click and beat sound, she lifts her head, eyes snapping open while she starts singing. In all the previous weeks, she has just been venting her sadness with her voice. Tonight, she is different. There is no hidden grief in the wispy tone she uses. I don't know how she does it, but she gives a mysterious vibe to the way it rings. I hear it echoing across the room. I get the sense that something is watching me in front of me, behind me, to the, my sides. It's certainly creepy and fits right into the dark theme. That's not all. Taylor layers her voice with a vibrato. The first hearing tells a mystery. Yes, but that's only the beginning. The pulses afterwards give some sort of answer, but no resolution. I feel like I'm tossed into some kind of futuristic conspiracy, a confusing new world order. Beautiful on the outside, dystopian within. Song descends into a rap verse. Her pitch dips down with it, low whispering. They're watching you. They're all seeing. They're listening to your words of despair. There is no praying. The melody returns with a fire of change. Taylor cracks a glow stick in her hand to draw an arc of blue-green above her. There is a defiance in her voice. There is strength and determination. I sense the hope within her, like a light in the dark. She whips the light down like a sword, or maybe it's more like a gun. Really ready to shoot laser through an enemy of evil, I've been reduced to, uh, to a little fangirl. But beneath the story she's telling through the melody and lyrics, I sense something more personal. Is this Taylor's own growth? Is this what I've inspired her to become? 
The darkness she has previously drowned herself is in actually more like a cocoon. Tonight she has broken free. It's like the dystopian society of her song, so established that you cannot take it down in one go, else humanity itself would crumble. But awareness will allow mankind to rationalize right and wrong, bring perception to society's suffering, thus evolving the world into a better place. In Taylor's case, she has begun to evolve towards a more meaningful way to, of expressing herself. Whatever her plan is, the way she was venting it couldn't go anywhere. We felt that what she is trying to portray, but we couldn't connect with it. Singing is an art, and art is not only a mode of expression, but also a way to communicate. It seems that Taylor has finally figured it out. She's still herself, but she's also using her inner feelings as motivation towards expressing other ideas, to tell stories that may not be her own. She's aware of what's troubling her, and in singing about them, she comes to confront them on her own will. She ends up defeating them with her song, changing the mindset she originally had. In order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. This is what she's trying to say about this week's theme. Is this also her personal discovery? An intriguing performance by Taylor Warren. There's an elegance to the simplicity of her voice, and yet she manages to convey ideas far deeper and profound. It certainly leaves me with many thoughts. It looks like to be another tough decision this week, my audience. Let us cast our votes during the commercial break, and we'll be back with the results. Who will make it to the final showdown? We shall see in a moment. The three of us wait anxiously at the prep room for the results. One of us will have to go while the other two make it to the finals. Would I be the one eliminated? I mean, I always been like Alice always thinks that she's gonna get eliminated, but I don't think she is going to get eliminated. I don't want to be the one. I want to stay. But, but even if I lose here, I don't think I have any regrets. If not for this show, I wouldn't have met all these great people. I wouldn't have met the real me. How else would I be able to face my dreams head on? I didn't think I had the talent to pursue this road, but now I know this talent is something shaped by hard work and circumstances. To hone a talent, you must seek out a platform for training it, then study and practice till it's sharp as a sword, shine like a diamond. I know I've done it this time, all thanks to the unforeseen opportunity and my own resilience from backing down. I'm not afraid of failing, because that doesn't make me a failure. I still succeed, and I will still succeed. Why do I hate that look on his face? Time for the three to, for the three of you to go. All three of us? Yes, it's more exciting that way. <laughs> and we're back with the results. How do you feel about this, Taylor? How should I feel about it? I'm nervous. Me too. You and Taylor, are you, you, Taylor, are you nervous? Who wouldn't be? But you look awfully calm about it. What's your secret? Why don't you almost say clam? Satisfaction. This show was more than I bargained for. To have learned so much from the others. I learned so much about myself. I think it's already worth it. Going to the final is just the icing on the cake. Still an enticing icing though, is it not? I don't mind sweets. And Risa, Alice, do you agree with Taylor too? Yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Even if I have to step down before the final, I think I already gained a lot from this experience. Cherry looks at me and grins, the nervousness finally parting a little to show her inner joy. Um, it has been really nice. I've always just sung for a single person. This is the first time I've sung for somebody else, for strangers I've never met. And though I still don't know how to do it well, I think I just had fun trying it out. I'll try harder in the future. I want to sing for more people, and sing not just about myself, but about other people, other stories. Alright, and the person who will be eliminated from week 4 of Supernova is... Oh gosh, who is it? The next moment is unreal. It's all silent in my world as I watch Cherry bow and take a step down from the stage, leaving Taylor and I standing. I made it to the finals. That means Cherry got eliminated? What? I... I... I have no words. I don't know what to say. Pleased to be your opponent in the grand final? I look forward to our battle of voices, Alice. Oh my gosh. So it's just me and Taylor. Man, having breakfast first thing in the morning used to be so light and breezy. Now with half of the girls cut from the competition, it was down to me and Taylor. Normally, I'd be ecstatic, but... Cherry got eliminated, what? No, I don't like... Okay, I, I kind of hate that Mary and Cherry got eliminated. But I guess that's the game. That's the game. And now, it just felt weird. Just sitting here between the two of us. It was so weird. And probably quiet too, without Cherry around. Taylor wasn't a talkative sort. She didn't lose sleep over the fates of the other girls. She was just keeping to herself. I just... Very calm. I want to say something. I'm going to say something. To break the awkward tension in this atmosphere. So, it's just us now. Yep. Big show last night. Hope Cherry's feeling better today. Mm-hmm. She just kind of seems like the lonely sort. Maybe I'll see her later. Mm, yeah, could be. You do you, girl. Wh what's your problem? If you don't mind me asking. Because, I mean, you're kind of a little moody. I, ha I have a problem? 
Yeah, I'm trying to have a conversation here. Yeah, like, you know, to break the awkward silence. Look, Alice, I like you. We practice together, we perform together, and maybe we'll end up working together someday, maybe on some collab album. But today, these next few days, we're competitors, and it's coming down to the wire now. Yeah, it's getting intense. I got better things to worry about than making hapless small talk, and I know you do too. Uh... Well, that was decidedly deci decisive. decisive. Taylor didn't seem all that eager to hold a conversation. I hope I'm pronouncing these words right. <laughs> I was just hoping we'd all still be friends by the end. I don't know. T Taylor sighed to herself, poking at her scrambled eggs. It's the messed up American model of competition, not us, it. It just kind of stirs up drama like this. Like it's not enough that you win, others have to lose. Do you really believe that? I kind of have to, I'm not here to lose. And I'm sure as not going to waste the opportunities I'm given here that I earned. I may mean to crush this competition. No hard feelings, Alice. Taylor talked like a big game. She was determined to win it all. Yeah, no hard feelings. Besides, I know you never admit it. I'm glad we're friends and that we got to know each other. Heh, <laughs> ditto. Even though her thick armor still, she still cared, she was smiling earnestly. She couldn't hide her real feelings. Let's do our best. I'm going to, into the finals prepared. Good to hear. It'll make obliterating you all the more satisfying. Aw, come on, Taylor. Go to the mall, go to Cherry's room, or hang around the lounge. You know, it's been a while since I talked to Mary, but I did promise to go to Cherry's room as well. So I'll visit Cherry first, and if there is a later option, then I will see Mary. Man, I can't believe it's just me and Taylor left. And I am kind of curious to know what Cherry's room looks like. I haven't seen Cherry for a while. I should check up on her. She's so emotional and big-hearted. She can't be taking this news well. I knock at her door. I hope she's inside. Come in! Huh? She didn't sound particularly beat up about it. Oh, her room is so cute! A cat's a blue! I let myself in, finding Cherry with a laptop. She's tucked into a comfy chair, rapidly typing away. I made jelly. Do you want some? You're eating it from a teacup. I didn't have any balls. They're like jello shots, except, um, appropriate for kids. <laughs> All right, we can have our jelly with class and style. I strolled past her, picking out a chilled teacup from her mini fridge. So, uh, you seem well. Sorry that, well, you know, the whole elimination thing. Oh, it's okay. I was kind of bummed earlier, but look at this. Cherry turns her laptop to around towards me. I lean forward, squinting to get a better look. Is this a common thread from some kind of online forum? What's all this, Cherry? Look at all these people. They're all wishing me well. A lot of them were really sad too. Others wanted to say I did a really fantastic job. And then some people got really mad. This guy says he was going to take matters into his own hands. Oh gosh. Maybe I should let the producer know. Maybe. That kind of sounds dicey. But maniacs aside, it sounds like everyone loved you. Mm hmm Reading everyone's words of support made me feel a lot better about this. Good to hear, Cherry. And and I'll get a front row seat when I see you and Taylor on stage. Uh, oh, yeah, that that's true. That's right. I don't think anyone's more of a fan than Cherry. She comes off as more of an idol superfan than an idol herself, even if she more than qualifies as the latter. What the heck does the latter mean? Hey, Cherry, if you look on Mugshot, I'm sure you'll find more fans there. All right, I should make a post there. I was just finishing up making my account on this. Uh, maybe don't do that. That one guy's still taking matters into his own hands. And I spend the better part of the afternoon trying to keep Cherry out of trouble online. If she is no longer a contestant, it feels like nothing's changed. Dinner was enjoyable as usual. Even after I had to slip past the director and boss arguing in the hallway afterwards. This place is so huge. I feel like I haven't even began to see all of it. Tomorrow is a new day, and with it, new opportunities. I lay my head down and slowly but surely fall, fell asleep. I have been tossing and turning the entire night for some reason. I couldn't sleep. The sun has finally risen. I turn off the alarm. I sit and drag myself out of bed. No matter how many times I look at it, this room still feels so empty. Sure, there's pieces of high-class furniture to fill the space in an artsy arrangement. It's still much too large a place for a single person to stay in. I don't belong here, do I? What the heavens am I thinking? I must be having one of those days. Well, time to gather myself before heading down for breakfast. 
You look like a zombie. Wow, Taylor. Wow. What about you and your little messy bed hair? And why is the director there? Oh my gosh, I realized that the, um, the director is way smaller than Taylor. I'm sure you're right. Yeah. Yeah, probably bed hair. Not that I exactly want to hear it from you. Eat up and get yourself together, Inti. The director slides the menu across the table. I don't bother with it, just turning around to the maid to ask her for a glass of water and a piece of toast. I don't have much of an appetite. Ordering for food is just one of the many strange ways things are done here. It feels so alien. Better that you keep yourself preoccupied than to worry about unnecessary things. Yeah, I guess she's right. Okay, well, we already went to Cherry's room. Hang around the lounge. Let's go see Mary. Because, I mean, I mentioned this earlier, but I've already seen Cherry because, I mean, I haven't seen her room yet and... I'm kind of curious to see how Mary's doing. I think the producer had something special planned for Mary at the mall today. Maybe I'll check on that. And it's been a while since I've talked to her. There's actually a pretty big crowd forming near the water fountain. Alice, whatever are you doing here? Wait, whatever are you doing here? Or don't you mean what are you doing here? It seems the producer picked me out from the crowd. She seems disappointed. Surely you have better things to do than to trapeze about the mall. Don't you have your own preparations to handle? Uh, well, yeah. But I wanted to see what Mary was up to over here. I'll have you know she's rather busy at the moment herself. Dealing with a demanding fan base is practically a full-time job, you know. I can tell from the lineup. Like, how big is that lineup? I catch a glance towards the front. She's flanked by two bodyguards and furiously beaming autograph after autograph. She looks busy. Maybe I should leave her to her business, run up and yell hello or ask for an autograph. No, she's probably busy, so I'll probably leave her be. Yeah, she looks busy. Probably doesn't need to see me. I'll check on her later. Yeah, and she'll probably be too stressed out with the autographs. An excellent idea. Now go on, shoo. I need you in peak form for our next show. And try not to let anyone spot you on the way out. It may distract from our signings over here. Okay. R right. Of course. It's disappointing, but I figure I can catch Mary a little later. Phew! Today was a blast. Maybe this whole idle standby thing wasn't such a bad idea after all. I'm going to work extra hard tomorrow, that's for sure. A little rest and then I'll be back at it tomorrow. I'm finally here. The end of the road. The last showdown of this contest. Oh my goodness, it's exciting. Oh, we're getting to the end. We're going to find out who's going to win, who's going to lose. Welcome back to Supernova Idol Contest, the final stage of the competition for the coveted throne of your next superstar. Taylor Warren, a veteran in the music industry, while she has stayed behind the scenes till now, she is a well-known composer of many songs. Her audience is spread across the globe, many praising the strong emotions she manages to evoke in her colorful melodies and driving rhythms. By entering this contest, she has taken off on what she describes as a path on self-discovery. Now she is not only writing music for us, but also performing it live, showing us exactly the messages she wishes to convey. What are her inspirations? What are her motivations? Now she will lay her soul before us. Taylor, the stage is yours. Oh, this is gonna be so cool. Wait, what type of theme is this? Or did I just miss the, like, theme? Did they mention the theme and I wasn't paying attention? We have walk walked a long way. Jacques is right. It really has been a month of sweat and tears. We have met many people along the way, but now this is a path that we must take alone. The audience is watching us. Our friends and family are watching us. We are surrounded, but the moment you set foot on the stage, you are by yourself. You are in a place where you, they can't reach you. Still, you must shine for them, like the sun and moon, stars and meteors. You are high above the people, but you must make them gravitate towards you. Show them the flame that burns in your heart and use it to warm their hearts too. That's what Taylor is doing now. This is the first time I've seen her like this. She is no longer quiet, sarcastic personality she once was. Hiding behind a mop of dirty blonde and thick glasses. Oh my gosh! Whoa, what a change! She looks like a prince. Like, she looks... Not gonna lie, she does look like a boy in a prince Tommy. Oh my gosh! Oh wow, such commitment to outfit change. The creased shirt, pressed collar, crisp clean lines of her suit. She is positively radiant today. And that's just her appearance. Her demeanor, her voice... She has left her shell far b behind her. This is the new Taylor, the real Taylor. And the talent she is showcasing is absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh, it's interesting to see what she looks like without the glasses. She has green eyes. Nice. Her voice starts, says, starts deep and rises like a bird taking flight. Not just any bird, she's an eagle soaring high, spreading its wings to glide the azure skies. The floodlights reflecting golden off her hair are like sunshine crowning eagle feathers. It's so bright that I must squint against her light. This surely is proof of her kingship over the heavens. 
Even though Taylor has always been so talented, I think she couldn't have performed like this without the struggles she has been through over the past weeks. Only after a long night does the light of dawn appear beautiful. Only after a cold winter does spring feel warm. Without loss, there is no gain. Without falling down, you never learn how to stand back right, stand back up. Taylor has regretted. Taylor has second-guessed her own decisions. She wondered whether she should really have been here. She asked if she were not the one standing on the stage, if someone else took her place instead. Would the contest nights be more interesting, more entertaining to watch? She was more suitable for standing backstage, watching others sing for her. Or should she be here, the one out there singing for us? I'm sure those were tough questions. I think she thought long and hard about them. There were times when her answers took her wandering backwards, regressing to depression and self-pity. But I'm not proud to say that I, along with the others, have helped show her the way. There is nobody who knows you better than yourself. If you were too afraid to sing your own songs, nobody would be able to do it for you. Life is full of hardships. We will face pain. We will face loss. But if we back down, we would just be standing in place, trapped where these dark feelings will continue to consume us. Though moving forward may sometimes feel like clawing through tangles or barbed vines, our bodies may feel like they have been torn from outside in and inside out. We must continue through these obstacles. Searing heat, freezing cold, dark nights, uncertain futures, these are all scary images that may flash through our minds, but in overcoming them, we become stronger. We are swords. We need to be abraded again and again to be polished into sharp bodies. I mean blades. Taylor screams her hopes into the audience. They roar with her, captured by her brilliance. We all want a better word that is what we are sh humans are wired to wish for. Taylor connects these dreams together and gives sound to it, amplifies it for more and more people to hear. It is no longer her personal strength that is sustaining her, but the strengths of many, many more of her supporters. This is what an idol should be. She is not afraid of her own dreams. She shows them to us. She shoulders our dreams along with his. She makes us one, united by our uncom uncommon desires. Not uncommon. Why did I say that? <laughs> Thank you very much for your performance, Taylor. A most fitting climax for her month-long journey here at Supernova. Our remaining contestant is Alice Carroll. Unlike Taylor, she has a little formal musical training. This is not to say she is unfamiliar with the industry. According to her, she has always been fascinated with idol groups, just like you and me. She would sing to their songs and dance to their moves, dress like them and hold her own secret concerts from the top of her he bed. Her audience, no one but herself. Like any rational young person, she saw little chances of succeeding in this competitive industry. Instead of pursuing a career on the stage, she resigned herself to one behind it, interning at a television production company. Her work was hard, but very mundane and underappreciated. She carried camera cables and lifted heavy equipment. She ran whatever errands were requested of her. What could prompt her to do all of this for the meager pay she was offered, if not for the slight glimmer of hope that she would one day stand atop the stage for an audience other than herself? Finally, she realized that she must grasp this hope, else it too would eventually fade. Thus, this is why she is now here to sing for us. Alice, this is now your stage. Please make the most out of it. Jacques smiles at me. It's a little hard to believe that he has made such an impressive speech from the little blurb he requested for me to submit. Of course, this is his job, but I also know that he managed to speak to my heart, because that's what I've shown him with my hard work, with my performances. I've spoken to everybody with my voice. Today, the last fireworks will be set. Regardless of the outcome, this will be my last performance at Supernova, but I know it will not be my last public performance ever. I've already made up my mind. No matter what, I will not back down my own dream again. I will pursue it. I will shine it for all my fans beneath this stage. City lights streaming, the air is whistling. I won't give up, give up. Spark a wish, keep on hoping, make a wish for a new tomorrow. Take the step with me, wish with me, together, together. We'll make our dream come true. I feel more at ease on this stage than I have ever before. I'm actually looking at the photo. So this is the outfit that Alice had. Why did I not see it on her little figurine before? Come on. Can you... I like the necklace. Oh, she's happy. All the pressure of winning is just gone. It's ironic, considering this is my final performance. And she's dressed like a princess or a queen. No, I feel like she's more of a queen with that shining golden crown and her... And that light. The heavy gown should be weighing me down, but my body feels light. My voice, which needs to be projected to the very back of this room, comes just as easily. It's crystal clear, like a cool mountain stream, meandering through rocky beds and emerald grasses. I remember the first time I've been here. I remember standing at the way back where it's difficult to even see who is on the stage. At that time, I would never have thought it would even get the chance to stand here. And when I was presented with the opportunity, I didn't even want to accept it. 
to accept myself. I thought I was silly. I thought I was immature to become an idol. What a joke. That's like a middle schooler's daydream. I'm an adult now. I need realistic goals to ensure that I can make a living for myself. What if what I failed to realize was that being an idol is a realistic dream for me? Sure, not just anybody can do it. It's a sad and unfortunate thought. But would I, Alice Carroll, be better off with a different occupation? Would I be better suited as a lawyer or doctor or bakery owner? I've always loved to sing. My strength is perseverance. I just happened to be endowed with the qualities of an idol. All I lacked was the confidence to pursue this career. Not anymore. I don't even need to draw them to me. The audience is naturally drawn. I can see it in their faces, not just dark shadows that I don't quite dare to stare at, but individuals, some of whom I recognize from previous weeks, some who I am seeing for the first time. As I break the melody into the harmony, weaving the sound waves in and out in a flawless beat, I can see my audience faces of awe. They are entranced by my voice, so rich and colorful, bright and warm. I don't think I'm the same brand of idol as Taylor is. I don't think I can stand out with the same kind of dominance, but there are some things that I'm, only I have. I can't shoulder everybody's dreams, but I have the capability of living my own dream and giving others the strength to live theirs. My dancing steps take me to the very edge where I can see Cherry jumping up from the front row. Trying to reach me, I can see Mary break into a wide smile, her golden eyes gleaming with delight. I know when I'm up here, I become endowed with an energy that overflows the confines of my own self. Maybe this energy is not solely my own. Maybe it takes many people to make me who I am today. But regardless, this energy becomes something I can grasp. I can amplify and give it out to those willing to receive it. Taylor calls it an inspiration. Perhaps that's what it is. I'm not an idol who towers above all. I am an idol who inspires. Oh, oh, you can be yourself too. I shout into the crowd, holding out my hand in the mind's eye. I see flowers blooming on the fingers, so ripe their petals catch the wind and scatter into the seats below. That's so beautiful. Pink and white, violet and orange, warm colors fill the room with feelings of spring. A season of new encounters, new beginnings. The flowers may be imaginary, but the little squares of colored tissue paper that rain down into my hands are not. Aren't you being biased here? I thought you didn't like her. I still, like, I just also realize the petals are still falling during this conversation. I'm just giving the audience exactly what they want to see. It is beautiful, seeing the final result of your own creation. I won't be so arrogant to call her my creation. Not just my sole creation, of course. Idols are created by all their supporters. Our wishes, our aspirations, all embodied in her very being. We see a piece of ourselves in her, which is why we can't help but fall in love with her image. Typical self-centered thinking from you, Katja. As though you're the one to speak. <laughs> oh, you know me too well. There is no performance that belongs to a single person to perform. There must be a recipient of what you're trying to express. Otherwise, it is nothing but an inner musing. Recipient. Recipient. I hope I'm pronouncing these words right. Oh my goodness, this is going to make me lose my English. This performance here is not really mine. At least not mine alone. The stage crew, the audience, the makeup artists, the organizers. Everybody plays a part. Then what's my role? Yeah, what is Alice Carroll's role in this? To bring, well, to bring it all together, of course. Come to think of it, maybe it was wrong to compare idols to light. We aren't the sun. We're just objects to be shone upon. Bask in everybody's hopes, we become an existence that inspires those watching us to pursue things that they once deemed impossible. Because they are the ones who made an impossibility like myself become reality. But these are all just philosophical blurbs that can't wait for another day. At this moment, all I want to do is sing. Sing to my heart's content, sing with everything I have. The lights are bright, the stage beneath me so large and beautiful. My audience's cheers warms me from within. I'm so proud, I'm so proud to be here. I wish this moment could last forever. I've never been so happy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for letting me stand here before you. Thank you for giving me your attention. Thank you for letting me discover myself. Just being here, singing for you, it's all I desire now. A few hours later, the shock hasn't gone away. It feels unreal that I was able to win it all. It makes me a little surreal that now at the end of the road, I have to pack my things and head out again. Oh wait, I was so lost. Wait, I won? Don't you have people for that now? Ah, uh, Mary, what are you doing here? Your door was unlocked, idiot. 
Don't make that mistake again. You're a celebrity now. Oh, right. I gotta get used to that. I'm gonna have a team and everything, I guess. Of course, I suppose there's a folksy charm to your personality. Ah, folksy charm, really, Mary. It could use some TLC, though. Something forward-facing for the ravenous public. What the heck does TLC mean? Mary, you're starting to sound like the producer. Oh my gosh. That face! I mean, your outfits, they're rather plain. Thank heavens for the costume department. Uh, I have great fashion sense. Oh, please, look at this one. I got a dirty at Big Richard's budgie buggies. They were mud buggies, and it was a souvenir. I like souvenirs. Well, you're an idol now, and that's a certain image you need to present. I was hoping I could maybe perhaps steer you in the right direction. Huh? Mary flourished a business card, her eyes focused on the far wall. She didn't seem keen on making eye contact at the moment. I give it an examination. It was professionally made. In Bononi, ebony and glossy with a sleek font choice, temp contemporary and understated. What's this about, Mary? You want to keep hanging out? Hanging out? No, no. Okay, yes, I would like to continue saying you. You have this precious naivety about you. It's almost infantile. I wondered if I could help you. Well, ease into the pressures of idol culture. So wait. Is, does Mary want to be like my producer or something? Or like work with me? Of course I would make myself uh, useful. Heh, you could be my personal chef too if you like. Uh, I'm not sure that's a great idea. Oh, come on, Mary. You don't have to act so professional and stiff all the time. I like you too. Really? I, I mean, the feeling's mutual. Come on, Mary, don't hide it. Thanks for being here with me, Ma with me, Mary. Blah. I hurry over to embrace her. Mary awkwardly pats my back in turn. It, it's no problem. I... I look forward to working. Oh my gosh. Spending more time with you. Yes. Yes. I feel like this is be, has to be a ship. Mary and Alice. That has to be a ship. Come on. It was strange. The two of us had spent so much time together as competitors. It was hard to tell if we could get along as just friends. But I'm glad she's here to stay. Wait, what? Oh, what's this? Oh, poop. I'm going to be late. Oh, is this like a little special bonus ending? I, I hope so. Or is it just going to replay everything? It's all my own fault. I shouldn't have been so excitable that I couldn't fall asleep all night. Then end up dozing off on my chair just three hours before showtime. Wow. Good job. Uh, wait, are we still Alice? Boss is go so going to kill me. Relax, Alice. You fidgeting around like this makes it hard for me to draw your brows. Sorry. I'll, I'll try not to. Then again, if you weren't so nervous, the makeup artist would be able to do this in my steed. Seriously, when have I become your personal assistant? You just, well, you know, when you gave me your business card and everything. Sorry, uh, to always rely on you, Mary, but you're the only one who can calm me down. I know, I know. Now just sit back and stop curling up like you're a pill bug. I'll finish this in no time. You girls done? Just a moment. Yeah, yeah, superstar, hurry it up, alright? Oh, Alice is pretty famous now. I'm trying. I'm so sorry. Shortly after the director leaves us, Mary finishes lining my right brow. I think that's good. Both brows are, brows are even. Aren't your expectations low? Can't help it. I've got to go. I give Mary's hand a squeeze and dash off for the stage, leaving her sighing in exasperation. I know she just wants the best for me. I'm so lucky to have someone like her by my side. Is it starting? Made it just before I was about to send down my lackeys to hunt you down, dead or alive. Oh my gosh, Katja. Welcome to season three of your favorite idol show, Supernova. Are you ready for another month of heart-wrenching, blood-boiling struggles for the throne of the, your next superstar? Yes, I know I'm ready, and she is too. Introducing our winner from season one, she will start us with the new, first song of this new festival. I make my way up to the steps. The familiar light falls upon me. Tap, Tay, Mary, Terry, they're all washing. I wave to them, feeling their tears pour energy into my heart. I'm sorry, Taylor, I called for Tay. I accidentally said tap. This is your idol, Alice Carroll. Oh, what? Hello? Well, that's Alice Carroll, the idol.